based at various so i just came sir to meet you i am not going to address anything to the participants okay. but just came right. to uh, meet you because this may be my as a chairman last virtual meeting with the sangeeta madam and as a sura to you sural sir oh really um, manish bhai i have to congratulate you because in your chairmanship this tel course has happened and i don't know how many students you have touched with that so, so I, I was just I, yeah yeah i mean so to madam we have i am just actually before going some data analysis wahi sab chal raha tha huh. around 6700 students we have uh, targeted and we have trained uh, this is fantastic i mean fabulous contribution so i really mean, i have I got support of your and especially kapoor madam <laughs> she led uh, led uh, from the front otherwise possible nahi hota and i was just uh, seeing ki what are the new initiatives this year we have taken at wirc mm -hmm. so just compiling the list before penning down so it was 42 different initiatives what we have taken this year which was not taken earlier 42 initiatives liye hai sardul bhai and president ka bhi naya hi hai na सर रिसर्च का भी नया ही है कि पहले इतना नहीं किया था नहीं रिसर्च का मेरे ख्याल से पहली बार ही कर रहे हैं सो ऑल दो रजिस्ट्रेशन आर लेस बट इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड पार्टिसिपेट इन दिस बट अगर इसमें से समझो पांच सात लोगों ने भी कर लिया पी एच डी तो इट विल बी ग्रेट टू अस मनीष जी कितने लोग रजिस्टर्ड है इसमें करीब सर फिफ्टी लोग रजिस्टर है तो दिस इज थ्री आवर्स का टोटल नाइन आवर्स का कोर्स है Yes. So the our target is at least four to five should encourage to do PhD. Uh, chartered accountant should do the PhD. That is what our uh, yes. ये इसीलिए बहुत बड़ा initiative है देखिए मैंने madam से पूछा अभी कि profile क्या है audience का तो अगर वो सारे chartered accountants हैं तो you are making a great ice breaking you and Sangeeta madam. So and sir, and to sir uh, something to add this year our president is also PhD sir. The president of ICI, Dr. Devashish Mitra, is from Calcutta. He is also PhD, sir. He is also doctor. Okay, okay. And uh, very, very great. knowledgeable person, sir. I see. Great, great. हाँ हाँ. नहीं अच्छा development है सब. ये तो इसे good development. कल मैं संगीता विडम से detail में बात कर रहा था कि अमेरिका में PhD और CPA में जो interaction है वो India में आना चाहिए. और आप लोग सब आपको बधाई जाती है कि आप उधर बढ़ रहे हैं. This is great. नहीं सर बिल्कुल और आपका हमेशा हमको गाइडेंस मिला है जब भी हमने आपको फोन किया कुछ भी डिस्कस किया ऑलवेज यू वाज अवेलेबल तो इट्स रियली रियली ग्रेट एंड आपके नाम से हमारा कई जगह काम हो जाता है सर यूनिवर्सिटीज एंड से कि नो नो दिस पेल स्ट्रक्चर इज वेटेड बाय सोरल सर सो बोले फिर हमको कुछ सोचना ही नहीं है सो इट वॉज रियली ग्रेट सर मैडम यू कैन स्टार्ट द प्रोग्राम so i am not going to speak so you can continue oh yes. yeah thank you sir you asking him to take people in no yeah मिश्रा जी पार्टिसिपेंट्स को ले लो हां मैम ले लिया मैम ले लिया ले लिया देन जॉइनिंग मैम स्टार्ट करिए ले लिया अच्छा जी रुकना है 5 10 मिनट क्या शुरू करो और आएंगे तो मैम चालू करिए आएंगे पब्लिक ज्वाइन करते रहिए दे आर ऑल जॉइनिंग इन I think wait for two minutes. Five yeah. five will take off, right? Yeah, we'll wait for two three minutes. Mm -hmm. Mishra ji, two three minutes. Hi, rukte hain.
शुरू करें मैडम आई थिंक अप्रोचिंग टेन मिनट्स या कपूर मैडम इज स्टार्टिंग कपूर मैडम यू आर ऑन म्यूट अच्छा and my god sorry very sorry a very warm welcome to all of you for the third day session on our research methodology and data analysis uh, i welcome all the participants to this interactive session on panel discussion and i welcome my members on the dais respected sangeeta madam who is taking the Lead who under whose guidance this workshop was the three days workshop was done. We have Dr. Suraj, the past president of IA, who has been always instrumental for you know, guiding us in the, in the future programs of ICI and of course our dynamic past RCM, Dr. Shandu Shah. And it's a privilege to have all of you all here. And Dr. Shrinivasan will join us in short time. So I would request Dr. Sangeeta uh, Madam to take charge of the event. Thank you. Okay, hello everybody. A very very good afternoon to you all. Uh, I think we are about uh, thirty odd participants over here. If possible, please put on your video if possible, so that it becomes uh, more uh, uh, fun. And um, if not, it it is also okay. And um, I really appreciate your resilience because this is, I think, the third day, and uh, you all have already undergone uh, six hours of listening to uh, various topics like statistical techniques and research construct and research methodology and all that. So, is it possible for you all to put on chat uh, what you all liked in the last uh, two days, four sessions which you all had? Which do you think are the topics that appeal to you all? So, maybe we could carry that forward. can you put it on chat or if you want you can unmute yourself Ma madam can they speak can they unmute themselves on their own yes so you can unmute yourself also and talk to us or you can put on chat last two days i think there were four sessions yes uh, yes bhavna madam tell me acha you are the coordinator bhavna madam aap mic on kariye हेलो भावना मैम 
Okay. Uh, Kaha participants list uh, here? Uh, Aparna, can I can you hear me? Aparna, can you hear me? Okay, very good. I was expecting more focus on research methodology and types of technique that can be used in. Uh, um okay abhishek jain okay let me see the chat thank you so much uh, okay let me come here first to uh, yes vishal varma thank you so much for sharing i was expecting more focus on research methodology and types of techniques can be used in research methodology okay uh, so, so dr sorrel sir uh, can you yes, tell me exactly uh, i mean what is research methodology Okay, okay. Huh. What is the uh, method in research like? Huh? I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Madam Sagita Ji, Kapoor Madam, uh, Shardul Ji, Srinivasan Sahab, and all my fellow panelists, and Manish Ji, maybe in absentia, and dear participants. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me thank WARC and all the organizers for giving me this opportunity. Of course, they have been, they have been very kind in telling me that uh, I've been associated with WIRC in various academic matters over the last one year, but that has been equally enjoyable for me. Like uh, Sangeet Bhavitam has asked me to say something about research methodology, what exactly it is. And because one of the active uh, and agile participant, I would say, has made a comment in the chat box. Uh, let me uh, just introduce myself by saying that I've been teaching methodology for last about three decades. Okay, so I may be an appropriate person to reply to question of Madam Sangeeta. Uh, the point is, uh, dear participants, that what is research? Okay, in order to answer to this question, let me again say something that what is research because you must have heard uh, stalwarts on this issue over the last two days. Okay, research is very briefly speaking, searching the knowledge which was not available before. In even another simpler words, when you try to look into the darkness of ignorance, why is sitting in the light of knowledge? Right? So it is just like this. You are sitting in an enlightened room. That means you are full of knowledge about so many things. But there are always many, many more things outside this enlightened room. And research is to look into that darkness bring those, those things into light, adding, go on, adding to knowledge, okay? Now, we all know about the great researchers, phenomenal researchers in the history, like Newton, like Archimedes, okay? And many more names may be taken. They, uh, we all know about the great stories of how they, you know, uh, one apple was falling and that made the gravitational pull come to the knowledge of uh, mankind and all. But these days in particular, when we are talking about these all things, uh, there is a consensus uh, emerging that research has to be done in a scientific manner. It cannot be an artistic way of doing this. So as you all know, that scientific matter means there is a step-by-step -step identified, universally accepted, methodology to reach the target of research output. That is exactly the research methodology. So these days we, we say that if the research is not methodical and therefore, I mean, in other words, it is not scientific, then we don't accept it to be an authentic research. So in brief words, this is exactly the research method. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Sorrel. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, I would say that any method which is scientific, evidence-based, where you have proper data, uh, authentic data on the basis of you, which you reach to some analysis uh, and some findings, 
and on the basis of which you can take some actions perhaps also. And the question further says, I, I hope uh, Vishal, a uh, little bit uh, light is put on your question as to what is research methodology. And to uh, the second part of the question is types of techniques which can be used. Now, Shardul, you have done your PhD. So can you tell me in your thesis, uh, can you discuss as to the techniques that you used? Uh, respected uh, Sangeeta ma'am, respected Dr. Soral, uh, respected chairman, uh, although in absentia, Mr. Manish Gadia, respected Mrs. Kapoor and all the office bearers of WIRC and all the participants, a very good afternoon to all of you and thanks to ICI for this opportunity. Uh, answering what uh, Dr. Sangeeta ma'am has asked me, uh, I think I fully agree with Dr. Soral that the entire concept of research methodology is something now to, has to be done very scientifically and also methodologically. It is something which is, is you know, for example, you know, uh, one of the methods which I found over a period of time is uh, statistics. Over a period of time, there are a lot of statistics which are available either directly or indirectly. And these statistical research methods can be used during the course of our research. Not only that, there could be sampling, there could be also some kind of forms or, you know, some kind of, uh, for example, when I did my uh, PhD, I also had given out a Google form and this was probably circulated to different masses of, or you can say, you know, different class of people so that a different viewpoint could be uh, not only identified, but a different class of views could be taken and hence a separate kind of method for research could be undertaken for different class of people. For example, you know, uh, when I went with the forms or the questionnaire, it was sent separately for corporates, it was sent separately to non not-for-profit organizations, it was sent to students, and at the same time, it was also sent to professionals. And when I talk about students, we also tried to get some kind of analysis. A research was done with regards to getting the mindset of engineering students, vis-a-vis -vis medical students, and vis-a-vis -vis commerce students. So, you know, when we go into research, it is not necessary that a same sample is required. When you try, to first identify your destination and then you try to go backwards, you will have to find more and more systematic methods to get towards your research methodology. And also what I find is just gathering the data is not important. How you then analyze the data is very important because data analysis becomes a critical part of the entire research methodology. So one is Obviously, you need to see your objective and once the objective is identified, you will have to work backwards at how are we going to reach those objectives and what are the different methods you are going to use. For example, the data analytics or you know the various critical thinking you have. And I think these are some of the tools which one can use for uh, research methodology. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let me share. If I have to write a research paper, first of all, you have to zero down on the topic. So suppose the topic is financial leverage, just uh, for uh, as a imagination sake. Then what I will do, the next step is that I will collect all possible data which I can get on financial leverage from good sources, like uh, maybe from uh, uh, Money Outlook or um, uh, uh, say uh, SEBI website, or MCA websites and RBI websites and uh, some uh, good uh, A-listed companies' websites and all get all possible literature uh, from um, accredited sources on that topic of financial leverage. Then go through that literature and then make a summary of each, uh, suppose I, and I target the numbers, suppose I have targeted 25 um, uh, uh, articles I want or whatever. So uh, then those 25 articles, I'll make 25 para summaries and read them thoroughly and then see what those articles have not re done research on, on what they have not commented on. 
So that is the gap in the secondary data. That is the secondary data which I have collected. There's no point in doing research on things which already there is a lot of research done. So then I do a gap analysis of this uh, secondary data which I have collected. And on that basis, I decide my research construct, what I want to uh, uh, find out further. And that is uh, the, my primary data. So then I extract variables from that. They are the, called the independent variables which I have to reach at. The dependent variable which are influencing the independent variables and the moderating variables which are influencing the dependent variables. So I prepare a table and on the basis of that table, I prepare a questionnaire, then have a send it to a, a small number of people that is called pilot uh, study. So then I understand if there is some mistake in what I have uh, done in, the, uh, in my uh, framing of the questionnaire, is there lack of clarity and all that people have to call me back and all. Finally, I uh, freeze my questionnaire and send it to a uh, sample, which is representative of the population. Then as uh, uh, what Dr. Shardul said, it's more important to analyze what you have collected. So then you have SPSS tools or other statistical uh, software, software uh, or tools easily available uh, where you analyze the data. And it is great fun then because then you arrive at a finding which you never thought. Something is in your mind and then you arrive at something else only sometimes. So then you either your, you have your null hypothesis and you have alternate hypothesis and all. So, uh, I mean, let's not get technical, but in research really, you know, uh, makes you, uh, I think a little humble because you start with something and you end, sometimes you realize that what you had in mind was uh, wrong and you come to some uh, finding. So, uh, so I think, uh, I hope we have answered your uh, uh, question. Uh, 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 Vishal, uh, 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 Vishal sir, do you want to share something new? Do you want to share? Are you okay with the answers? Can you unmute yourself? Uh, he has message. Yes, ma'am, he said. Okay, okay, great. Can we uh, formally start the meeting, ma'am? Uh, with the introduction and everything? Yes, yes. In, I'll just finish these questions and then I'll put, I'll introduce uh, Dr. Soral and Dr. Um, uh, Shardul. I was actually waiting for Srini to come and then I would have introduced all of them. Okay, okay. Uh, no worries. Uh, okay. So, um, uh, Abhishek sir is asking, I think we are able to uh, participate in some research to understand how the process of research and that this might help us to undertake our own research. Yes, a very good uh, uh, observation, uh, Abhishek. Unless you fall in the water, you will not learn to swim. Uh, you, you just start writing research papers. No? We have our own journal, ICAI journal. We have our WRC, uh, I don't know if the WRC newsletter, if you can give articles, but I'm sure if you send it to WRC, they will find some way where you can uh, get your articles published. You, have, you just Google, there are so many journals. Every B school in India and all over the world, they have their own journals and they're calling for articles. So initially they may refuse your articles, but they do give comments as to why they are refusing. And then you develop, you learn. You, I mean, but just start writing. And now this workshop may have given you some idea as to how to start writing. Just first zero on a topic, what interests you? Take that topic, do as much reading as possible on that topic, collect your secondary data, and then go in for your primary data, go in for the analysis, go and come to the conclusion and write your uh, research paper. Uh, it'll maybe take uh, two, three uh, iterations, but definitely you will be there because basically we are all chartered accountants. And let me tell you, intrinsically, we are research oriented. You know, we, we study so much, such tough exams, you know, we each and every line, the, uh, we try to find the interpretation in the provisions and the sections, the Companies Act. We try to see so many um, uh, things, uh, the ambiguity in them and all. And even when we do ratio analysis and all, we are trying to go deeper and deeper into the annual statements. So it is in our DNA, actually, the research, when, because of the training that we go through. So I don't think it would be uh, very tough for anybody to write a research paper. Oh my God. So this is, uh, uh, again, Vishal is asking, uh, Dr. Soral, can you answer this? In which type of data we can apply regression and in which type of data we can apply 
correlation. Achha, just one second. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, statistics, yes, uh, is very much needed in research, but please don't have a mental block that if you are not good at statistics, you cannot do research. Okay. So there is a lot of qualitative data also you can collect and quantitative data you can collect and the analysis is done by the software and tools available. So don't have a mental block about that. And yes, uh, it's easy. Correlation is when, uh, when you are trying to find relationship between variables and all. But uh, sir, I think uh, Dr. Sorrell, if you can yeah. answer this. Uh, ma I, I, uh, yeah, uh, if you allow me, I would like to reply to this question. And I would thank Vishalji uh, for raising this question again. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, partially, uh, Sangeeta Madam has answered your question, but I just wanted to add something. Okay. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, you have asked a question that for which data will be suitable for application of correlation and relation. Uh, I mean, this is uh, uh, it actually, I don't know uh, with what background you are, but it's a high standard question. Let me tell you now at the outset. It's not an easy question which you have asked. So I'm very happy about it. Let me first tell you that in order to learn exactly uh, answer of your question, you must appreciate in case you are not aware before, maybe that you were aware that the data scaling is of four types. Okay, That is nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. This is something which we as accountants okay, are normally not aware because this is not our domain. right? We have data, we analyze that. Okay, we have financial data, we apply, like Madam said, ratio analysis we apply, right? we have cash flows, we make comparisons, all that. This type of classification, I would repeat, the nominal is the first category, then ordinal, then interval, and then ratio. These four are the four scaling or measurement styles of numerical data. Now, this is very important that you know statistics, fine. In your CA also, Chartered Accountancy course, you must have done a lot of statistics, very tough statistics also. But very important to appreciate is that all statistical tools that you know, and much more than that you do not know, because actually statistics is a mahasaka lot much we do not know nowadays at least with the coming up of software and all you must ensure before applying any tool because all spss and other even in ms excel now we have lot of statistical objects beware that the question which you have asked is extremely important that if i am not sure that this data would be suiting to this technique we must not apply because that will be the true conversion of the uh, dictum garbage in and garbage out. It will be the true conversion of. So be very, very clear about it. Now, this way, the answer to your question is that both regression and correlation can be applied only when the data are of ratio scale. Okay. Now, there are so many other things related with that, but this is the answer to your question. You must have a ratio scale data, uh, uh, you know, to apply regression and correlation both. Thank you for your question, madam. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Naina, madam, has asked, can we do research or pursue a PhD on any topic or need to be related to finance and accounts? Okay, <laughs> I think that depends on your, uh, why, why do you want to do PhD? Why do you want to do doctorate? So let me share my story that uh, I, I was a practicing chartered accountant for many years and uh, then I joined academics and till then I didn't need to do my PhD only after I joined academics I was required to do my PhD so very late in life I did my PhD after retirement and then I wanted to teach uh, finance I wanted to be in the finance department and that is why I did something related to uh, and I wanted to teach in B school so I did related to commerce and uh, management. So uh, if you are going to do PhD only for your interest, it is only for uh, because you are interested in a particular topic, I think, then you can do on anything. I think uh, uh, Dr. Shardul has done courses on Jainism also. So it doesn't matter. Whatever interests you, you can do PhD on that. But if you're doing it for a particular purpose, then that purpose has to be served. No? 
Dr. Shardul, am I right? Or do you want to add something to this? I think what you said is absolutely correct. Uh, and uh, the background, you know, uh, from which I actually did my PhD is, uh, you know, something very different. So I used to, uh, although I used to be active at the CA Institute, I used to be regularly going at Bombay Chartered Accountant Society. And there at Bombay Chartered Accountant Society, uh, I'm talking about the year, I think it was in early 2010, nine or 10, when one of the past presidents of BCS, uh, Mr. Mayur Nayak was then the president and a very, very dynamic person. And uh, at that point of time, the manager of BCS was Dr. Kasim Rajabali. So these were the two people actually who instigated me to do, uh, you know, something for my own self. Uh, so at that point of time, uh, they told me, Shardul, we are pursuing PhD. Why don't you think of doing it? You love academics. You like to do a uh, lot of courses. At that point of time, I had also recently completed a course on securities law by government law college. Again, securities is something, the law which was very close to my heart at that point of time. But again, because of lack of time and because of lack of focus or direction, I did not pursue it. Thereafter, while I was uh, representing the institute in, as a council member, I also had the opportunity of visiting various colleges to supervise the examination. So at that point of time, I, I, I had visited Bhavan's college, I visited Sydney College and various other colleges, for example, Hinduja College. The principal of Hinduja College at that time was Dr. Chitra Natrajan. And again, a very, very fine lady. And in fact, she pushed me. She was telling me, Shardul, you are doing so much for the society, so much this. But if you do not do research yourself, if you do not actually plunge, as Dr. Sangeeta Ma'am rightly said, if you do not put yourself into the water, you never swim. So she actually pushed me a lot. Hey, Shardul, please pursue the same. So again, I got pushed by a very, very fine uh, professor, Dr. Chitra Natrajan from Hinduja College. But again, I never knew how to do it. Thereafter, a few years in life, I found Dr. Subhash Desai. This again was a very renowned chartered accountant, but in practice. So hence, I could a bit relate myself for how to do it. Dr. Subhash Desai ultimately became my mentor. He also became my guide along with uh, Dr. Mayur Nayak and Dr. Kasim Rajabali. These were the three people whom I feel I was personally influenced and pushed. Hey, Shardul, you have to do it. And believe me, the satisfaction, it took almost four years, but the satisfaction which you get in the process is immense. And the satisfaction is not only towards uh, personal uh, getting the degree, but the entire process is amazing. Right from, you know, the entrance examination, because I did try also the entrance examination a couple of times, but believe me, in Mumbai, uh, this entrance exam is also tough. And the entire process is uh, uh, ultimately is so nice, but uh, I, I really wish and pray that all chartered accountants should at least give an attempt or uh, try to become a PhD. Another small, uh, strong influencer for me was Dr. Anup Shah. Dr. Anup Shah, again, uh, a very active member of Bombay Chartered Accountant Society. In fact, he contributes regularly. In fact, friends, he was my mentor since school. So school, he was a senior to me. Thereafter, you know, chartered accountancy, uh, sorry, during Sydney College, he mentored me. In the CA course, he mentored me. And he always pushed me towards Bombay Chartered Accountant Society. So, you know, another very, very reputed person, uh, his father was also a doctorate. He himself today, I feel, is a, one of the finest chartered accountants which we have. And he has written so many books and so many articles. So, you know, you will have to find people who are not only your mentors, but also coaches. So I think two people matter a lot in your life who are coaches and who are mentors. And, uh, you know, even during this entire journey, you will find a lot of people who will probably encourage you most of the time. But uh, believe me, friends, it's uh, only absolutely going through the process which will enrich you a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh... Shardul, that thanks for sharing with us so much. I'll just share uh, Dr. Shardul's uh, CV in just a second. Okay, can the screen be seen? Uh, and what Dr. Shardul said is very, very true. We need angels at every turn when we have to take important decisions in our life. And uh, these angels come in, the, uh, they may be our mentors, they may be our coaches, but they are, we are, they are needed and we are where we are because of them. 
and uh, maybe at various stages there are different people who are there for us uh, so i hope all of you have get good mentors good guides good coaches who will motivate you all and as uh, dr shardul's wish is that all chartered accountants should become doctorate and should have a doctorate because it, it is a wonderful journey doing research and he, dr shardul has amazing energy you know he is associated with i don't know with the wrc with the uh, cricket association with imc with jain ca federation with the young national cricket club with the kaf parade um, um, residents association with the kala gurjari uh, uh, junior some cultural center with uh, i don't know and uh, he is a faculty at ic wrc programs with gst department with ed department with national academy of direct taxes and also other colleges like jain and hr i don't know from where he gets that much energy but you know my someone had told me once that those who do 10 things can do 14 things and those who do two things can do those two things also properly so all of you all are much younger in age and more used to multitasking than us but he is truly versatile and does a lot of multitasking so this is his uh, cv very much in uh, brief and i will just uh, share dr soral's uh, uh, cv too so uh, dr so actually we are very very lucky today to have dr soral and i would like i would urge the participants to ask any number of questions to him as possible because he has such a i mean vast vast experience in this specific field i don't know how many students have done their phd under him and uh, he, he was just chatting with me yesterday and telling him that he has taught two three generations of people you know the children are coming whose parents and who he has uh, taught so all over the world his students are spread out and they remember him a lot i'm sure on guru purnima day he receives more than 500 messages and many many students owe their phd to him and where they are in life today is an excellent mentor excellent uh, guide teacher faculty writer author he is also the recipient of ic international research award and um, uh, extremely compassionate person who understands young people and uh, i hope you all can ask as many questions as possible to him and very very briefly i will share my uh, cv oh, my uh, little write up on me and let me tell you this is the second innings in my life and i am enjoying it thoroughly and um, we would we will discuss this though it is not uh, directly related to research how academics can become a second career or can be an alternate career or you can do it side by side with your practice or whatever you are doing because i am enjoying academics like anything i mean i started late in life and entered academics but it has really increased the happiness quotient in my uh, life so and uh, speaking about uh, techniques of research and how you collect uh, primary data which is very very important how you collect primary data and today it is so easy you, you google and you have uh, so much of information that of course you have to filter to find the true information and information which may not be really factual it's like you know how on whatsapp you you get so many messages which uh, may all may not be true similarly all that is on internet may not be factual uh, it may be just some fiction uh, fiction and somebody has just you know uh, half baked information they have put which may really throw uh, our, our research findings uh, put us on the wrong track also so the way we do research today and the way research was done in the olden times is totally different and uh, i would like dr soral to uh, discuss a little bit as to yes times have changed and how we did research originally in the good old days and how we are doing research today because of technology and what we have to be careful about thank you madam uh, i mean now uh, madam has asked me a specific uh, uh, you know point to comment on uh, rightly said you see i am an old person in academics so it would be useful for the audience the young audience sitting here listening to us 
to learn about you know the spectrum of research activities over last four decades because i have myself witnessed four decades journey in academics so let me share with you initially how the scene has changed i was uh, talking a bit lit, uh, with uh, madam yesterday uh, in the morning in fact uh, it was 1981 okay i should spell the year because that will give you a clear idea exactly what i am talking about that uh, i started doing my phd and luckily it was god's grace and the grace of my teachers that i got an appointment as assistant professor in uh, a university the mohanlal sukhadia university which i served almost all through my life with a few exceptions here and there wherever i have gone gone abroad or so, at some other place that almost hand in hand some 15 days gap was there in between that i but was registered for my doctoral degree and that i, that I started my teaching i uh, at this stage i would like to also add one thing to what uh, uh, sangeeta madam has not actually asked that how research impacts you because uh, in last 5 to 10 minutes she was telling that she it is a second journey for her and i really enjoyed listening to her when she said that she is it has added significantly to her happiness index uh, quotient of her life i mean so such an accomplished chartered accountant you know she is about 38 years old ca you know very very senior CA. and she was telling me her profile you know she has served all top positions as a practicing ca now she says that going into academics it has added happiness to her this is something which you the young audience should uh, focus okay and in that i am also making my addition into that point that as i said in 1981 it was december 1981 to be specific Uh, i was lucky that both my journeys of teaching profession and my journey of doing research started 41 years before okay many of you youngsters may not have that age even <laughs> now the point to be uh, underlined here is that uh, i naturally you know it happens those of you who are teachers know it that when you start teaching uh, it's a different type of challenge for you you might have been a very bright student all through gold medalist and first attempt or ca meritorious whatever but going to a class and facing the young students maybe that they are not as intelligent as you is an entirely different job so you have to work very hard in the beginning at least now at my stage uh, maybe i may be just asked to address any audience without any preparation but that is because of all my experience that i young age you can't do that so what i am uh, trying to tell you is that i started preparing very well for my teaching classes so that i perform well students applaud me and all what happened is that i finished my phd in about four and a half years i will tell you because sangeeta madam has asked me how the days have changed how did i do my phd that time that will be interesting for you uh, the youngsters here also that i will tell you just just now uh, after few minutes but the point here at the moment i want to mention to you which will be uh, uh, very interesting and a little guiding note for you is that what happened that when i started teaching i initially started teaching undergraduate students okay uh, because i was young teacher so naturally i was not given post graduate classes some students who i taught at first year uh, graduation second year graduation i taught income tax i taught corporate accounting something like that next year again you know those students were promoted to the next class so somehow it happened that in my first 4 5 years of teaching career there were some students whom i taught every year so like somebody was taught by me first year second year third year then post graduation first year and like now some of these students made a comment to me after they were taught by me for 4 5 years which is now i am reiterating before you and this is a guiding light for you those students said sir aap to acha padhate hain sir ठीक है कोई भी टीचर को बच्चे ऐसा ही कहते हैं आप अच्छा पढ़ाते हैं सर हमें आपने चार पांच साल से पढ़ाया ठीक है आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट इन द सेम ड्यूरेशन आई वाज डूइंग माय पीएचडी आल्सो ओके आई वाज अ नेसेसेंट रिसर्चर इन द बिगनिंग ग्रेजुअली आई डेवलप्ड माय रिसर्च एक्टिविटीज आल्सो एंड वेंट इन टू यू नो माय यू नो द फाइनेंशियल एरिया वेयर आई वाज डूइंग पीएचडी दीस स्टूडेंट्स सेड कि सर एक बात हम आपको जरूर कहना चाहते हैं इस साल दर साल आपकी पढ़ाने की क्वालिटी में बड़ा सिग्निफिकेंट इंप्रूवमेंट हुआ 
Now, how do we interpret? This is what I wanted to quote you. Now, let me tell you, of course, once you are teaching one year, two year, you are getting more experience. So naturally, your teaching style will be improved. Right. But additional, that, that must have happened. I don't deny that. But what I'm trying to tell you is that was also much of an impact of my dwelling into research. Because I was four-year-old researcher and a four-year-old teacher. So four-year-old four -year teacher definitely will be better than one-year-old teacher. But if you are a four-year-old researcher also, your mental horizons change. Your way of looking at the things change. Your imagination goes up. Your depth of understanding is transformed. So this is where, uh, you know, the initial comments, uh, if you take a cue from initial comments of uh, Sangeeta Madam, why a chartered accountant should do research? Okay, why a chartered accountant? You know, you all have qualified this. I was telling her yesterday also, uh, you know, I travel all over the world. I am a member of American Accounting Association also. I know people there everywhere. Indian CA has a worldwide reputation, right? Because our examination standards are good. Our ICA is doing a great job. You all have that degree. So why to trouble yourself more? Why to put your steps into research? This is the reason, my dear friends. If you do research, like Charlotte Ji was mentioning just before, you will yourself realize, let nobody else comment on this. You will yourself realize that after doing research for some years or even more years, your understanding level have become different. Even I am very sure in commenting on this and Sangeeta Madam and Shardulji and other chartered accountants who are listening to me or doctorate also will vouch me for it. This that Your own circle friends, those who are all CS, they may be as bright as you are. But if you are a doctorate, if you have research, written three research papers, they will sometime make a comment, yeah, kuch bhi kao bhai. Tumhari understanding kuch alahi level. So that is where it's extremely important for you to think about PhD in particular. Now, let me come to the, the other point. When I started doing my PhD, I was sharing this with her also. Um, youngsters may not believe this. <laughs> okay, my initial years of research. In fact, my uh, companies on which uh, the financial data I was working were mostly based in Mumbai that time. I was residing in Rajasthan. You see, those days, traveling even was very difficult as compared to modern days. Air travel, we could not have thought of because it was unaffordable. Right. My whole salary of a month, which was a very good salary because assistant professors in India are paid equal to the administrative office. Very good pay scale. It's still... It would have been one journey from uh, my place to Mumbai by air would have finished my one month salary. So forget about it. Trains were very less. Journey was, you know, comfortable. It was not. I had to travel to Mumbai, go to different uh, industries, take permission from them by writing letters. Right? Only letters were the option. They used to reply me late. After obtaining permission, I have to travel down to Mumbai. One instance just to explain the whole thing. I have traveled down to Mumbai, one big industry. I have shown my card to them. They said, yes, you have permission, come. I went to the finance officer there, finance controller. Okay. I said, sir, I am uh, G. Soral and kindly uh, permit me. So he said, yeah, okay, tell, tell us what do you want. I said, I need your 10 years financial data uh, from this year to latest 10 years financial data. See, you all know about the availability of financial data of companies now. Right? It is a click of button, actually, these days. Without spending any money, without going anywhere, even your mobile phone is on. You need not have a laptop. No. Press a button in your mobile phone, 10 years, 50 years, 100 companies, all that, is, you know. Those days, he will say, financial data. Okay. Uh, you see, those days also, all corporate laws were applying. They had to make it public. They were all public limited companies. No issue that they were confidential. But then they will ask, press the uh, call bell and they will ask the peon, Saab ko le jao andar waha jaha balance sheets rakhi hai, profit and loss accounts rakhi hai. Waha inko bitha do. Or de do inhe ab jo chate. Thik hai? Permission hoogi. Then they will take me to a room which is cluttered with papers. The person will say, aapko kin salon ka profit and loss account financial data chahiye? They will give you. 
they will give me thick books okay because there are no approximate data on that no they are actual account books if it is tens of crores of rupees the rupee amount is going to up to rupee 1 okay like that then they will tell me sir aapke paas kagaj pen hai humne kaha hai bhai hai isme se aap copy kar le <laughs> hmm so copying a big company's balance sheet item by item item by item right and then going to the next year balance sheet and then the profit and loss account that too after lot of purchases and now you all know the scene you have proves database if you do not know let me tell you about that the proves database is now having all complete financial data with analysis of thousands of companies in india and it is mostly uh, available in all libraries where you may spend either no money or you may spend a little amount of money and you get access to it right in addition what madam was mentioning yesterday collection of data has become easier okay we are now sitting at different places uh, and talking actually i committed uh, to come to this uh, meeting today and i am i had to travel because of some reason so i am in a, some different city and sparing time and talking to you no issue you can uh, have google forms you can have online chats you can have online interviews all sorts of conveniences those days there were no telephones even conveniently available very rich people used to have and of course there is no no reason to talk about good quality photocopy uh, i used to tell many of my students of various generations that i still preserve some papers sangeeta madam of those days uh, early 80s okay you you are almost of my age you know about it very bad quality photocopy they used to charge 2 rupees per page that time 2 rupees used to be a big amount those days so all facilities which you now have for absent okay now let us conclude this point which is very important you have easy availability of data you have easy availability of data analysis hmm chardul ji was mentioning about you know quick uh, processes uh, processing i mentioned briefly to you about ms excel even which is available you know very very easily everywhere lot of statistical analysis if you have 60000 lines you may make statistical analysis of those 60000 lines in a fraction of second now in old days we could not have even thought of it no issues and further to that you have all literature available in your laptop in your tablet in your mobile now we have softwares which will combine that literature give you you know search word facilities you have you can pick up every detail from the literature easily right you all know that okay now let us conclude this point come to the reason how should it guide you and what should you you take away from this uh sangeeta madam will agree with me on this many of we if you call us oldies or people of the ancient times <laughs> we used to say these young chaps you know hamare zamane mein kitna mushkil tha hai na tab padh ke batate hain aajkal kya hai button dabaya aur mil gaya data chahe to mil gaya inko analysis mein der kya lagti hai to ek ghante mein sara kaam ho jata hai hame 6 mahine lagte the this is actually a common word from people of my age maybe your parents also may be talking like that but dear friends dear youngsters my version is entirely different and there i want your kind attention actually my personal view is that research is much more challenging for the younger generation than it was for my generation agar maine aapko easily data de diye hain agar aap literature easily collect kar sakte hain अगर आपकी एनालिसिस सेकंड्स में हो जाती है तो डियर फ्रेंड्स डोंट थिंक दैट दोज हु आर यूजिंग योर रिसर्च दोज हु आर रीडिंग योर पेपर इन ए जर्नल दोज हु आर इवेल्युएटिंग योर पी एच डीज आई एम ऑल्सो एन ओल्ड पी एच डी एग्जामिनर देर आई कैन टेल यू हैव रिजन देयर एक्सपेक्टेशन थाउजेंड टाइम्स देन वाट माई एग्जामिनर यूज टू हैव आपको क्या लगता है आप एक रिसर्च पेपर लिखेंगे अभी मैडम ने आपको मोटिवेट किया है ना आप रिसर्च पेपर लिख दीजिए ओके जर्नल वाले कहेंगे कि दिखाइए रेफरेंसिंग की लिस्ट कहां आपने उसमें सम 40 50 रेफरेंसेस दिए दे विल जस्ट मेक अ डेस्क डेस्क रिजेक्शन कहते हैं उसको 
initially they'll say no no we can cannot send it to for further evaluation referencing is not appropriate you know 50 journals you are quoting which is not an easy task during my days again to reflect back i am very clearly remembering my great teachers of those days when i used to collect two relevant books and go to sir sir i have collected these two books they will say are beta shabash do kitabein leke aaya hai wah wow. bhai ye intelligent bachcha hai mehnati hai shabash aur karo hai na bahut acha kaam kiya hai aaj do kitabon ka kya sawal aap to 200 kitabein ek second mein le aayenge aap to international surfing karke kisi bhi madam ne financial leverage ki baat ki hai ab financial leverage pe abhi yahan se ye meeting khatam hone ke baad mein half an hour mein 1000 references collect kar lenge aap and they will be international quality references kiske samne zyada challenge hai kaun accept karega aapko aap phd kar lenge universities normally are little liberal in awarding phds for various genuine reasons i have been an old professor in the universities i agree universities ko liberal hona chahiye india ki need hai लोग कहते हैं साहब वो क्वालिटी बहुत अच्छी नहीं है वो हम बाद में देखेंगे हमें सारे यंगस्टर्स को पीएचडी के हरिणाम में लाना है इंडिया की नीड है ये अकाउंटिंग प्रोफेशन की तो और भी ज्यादा मैं उस पर आऊंगा वंस टाइम इस पर मिले ओके पर भाइयों और बहनों ये ध्यान रखिए आपने अगर अच्छी रिसर्च नहीं की आज के स्टैंडर्ड के हिसाब से कोई फायदा नहीं है काइंडली डोंट वेस्ट योर टाइम यू आर इवन अदरवाइज बैडली बर्डन विद योर प्रोफेशनल एक्टिविटीज and enjoy your life you know there has to be life and uh, uh, work balance also uspe dhyan do but if you are want to come to research arena be prepared things have become more challenging everything is at a step nowadays you see things have become automated there are softwares which will give you very high quality analysis which we could not have thought of in earlier days in a click of button अब आप मुझे बताइए ऐसी सॉफ्टवेयर्स अवेलेबल है कभी आप मुझसे आज भी ऐसे क्वेश्चन पूछेंगे तो रिप्लाई या किसी और दिन अपन मिलेंगे तो मैं आपको बताऊंगा मुझे आप एक बात का जवाब दीजिए और यू रिप्लाई वाइल सिटिंग एट योर प्लेसेस दैट सपोज यू आर मेकिंग सम एनालिसिस इन योर रिसर्च ओके एंड देर वॉज ए सॉफ्टवेयर टूल अवेलेबल फॉर मेकिंग दैट एनालिसिस सम हाउ यू आर इग्नोरेंट अबाउट दैट so you couldn't do that now once your research output comes in form of a research paper or your phd jo evaluator hai wo kya karenge bataiye mujhe aap kya wo aisa hi nahi maan lenge ki aap to aise researcher hain jise definition hi pata nahi hai jise definition hi pata nahi hai research kis baat ki ki hai aapne wo kehte hain oh my god this fellow is not aware of of the basic things because they are all well known softwares this fellow is not knowing no no we don't accept ye lijiye so please appreciate you are definitely passing through a phase where research has become really challenging and further to it don't worry you are you have already proved your abilities of studying passing tough examinations right coming out with flying colors you can do it no issue but my uh, was to make my job was to make a humble attempt in sensitizing you to the real world situation now uh, so when i'm uh, yes also. yes very well said dr soral uh, i i totally uh, agree with you ki today the young people are, have there is too much competition there is everybody is good because at the tip of at the tap of the finger all information is available to you in our times those who went to better schools those who had access to good books had an edge over the others today it is agnostic of your background you can be in a rural area you can be in an urban area you may have library access you may not have library access you may be coming from a ivy league college or school or from an ordinary uh, three tier town school or college it doesn't matter because everybody has the same information you just need a net connectivity and nothing else in life so the competition has increased a lot in my college i am head of department of sydney institute of management studies it's a small college in churchgate b road our cutoffs year after year is increasing only <laughs> this year it was 99.9 cutoff so, 
it is so tough so i i'm happy we are not belonging to your generation i mean you have you have to, start, you have to work harder I said. <laughs> and also you have to be careful of what you serve we didn't have that problem here you you have you are loaded with information you need to filter and arrive at the uh, authentic information uh, like even news today you know it is uh, there is so much toxicity and bias in the news you have to filter it out and arrive at what is actually the news today it's the same way and uh, something i think the chairman sir while he was chatting with us was saying about chartered accountants being part of nation building like today we are looked at having some larger role also and i think dr shardul you do believe you are interested in economics and entrepreneurship and how do you think research could be a route for contribution of chartered accountants to nation building i think uh, i absolutely agree with what our chairman mentioned and i think it was always something that the institute has always been trying to also move forward institute has always ensured that the members contribute towards the larger society and towards the well being and the prosperity of the country and i can only say in times to come the contribution of chartered accountants will become more as partners in nation building and this will only be proved time and again there are various such examples if you see even in politics for example we have dr uh, c s uh, suresh prabhu we have mr piyush goel and who are continuously doing and striving to ensure that there are politicians also which are contributing in a positive way in nation building now connecting the same with the research i would say that as chartered accountants we have to also continuously innovate ourselves and if we do not innovate ourselves then we become redundant meaning thereby that means every year as you all know we do 30 hours of cpa we cpe which is a mandatory requirement now what this 30 hours of cpa means is we are continuously rebuilding our skills and re ensuring that we becomes well we become relevant in the society as far as psg is concerned friends please remember in psg also as sangeeta ma'am rightly mentioned we have to do something which is bridging the gap or we have to find something which is different than something which is not already existing in present so identification of the topic means in your research it is very important for you to first identify something which is already research research is not done on that particular issue before so that i think that spark will definitely come during the part of the cpe which you are doing over a period of time and when you are doing cpe not exactly on the topic which comes to you on a day to day basis the reason i am saying this is because that spark will help you enable go into the field which is not explored by any of the chartered accountants or any of your fellow colleagues earlier the reason i am saying it is because friends at the heart of every chartered accountant is research for example if you are doing audit you are doing audit sampling you are going through so many numbers either it is internal audit or if you see statutory audit even in internal audit for example you see continuously the uh, you know the process flows and you see where the uh, flows are not proper so you definitely have a mindset of going through the processes in far greater detail if you come to statutory audit again you have to go through the various laws you are going to ensure that as far as companies act is concerned or income tax act is concerned or whichever for example a banking company is concerned there are rbi regulations etc so you do always have at some point of time somewhere back in the mind to go into much uh, further detail in any uh, any of the subject is concerned so i think as chartered accountants we love to read we always like to go to the depth those who are doing income tax for example we always see before giving any opinion we always open the income tax act once again so every time you find a new dimension to it and that exactly the new dimension is something which i am talking about 
and this two dimension, uh, dimension which uh, you know uh, PhD allows us to give is something which is very very interesting, and you try to get into uh, the detail as much as possible, and as researchers we always look at it from a different point of view. So, for example, my my research topic was on royalties and fees for technical services. The reason, friends, I took up this topic is I feel in India litigation is unending, and as chartered accountants as different from lawyers chartered accountants always want that there has to be some finality to some kind of argument as distinguished from an advocate who always lies or who always likes to carry on the matter for a longer period of time so what i found is in the field of royalties as well as in the field of fees for technical services there was immense litigation going on and unfortunately in india when we lose any litigation or if you say on the other side in fact when i win any litigation unfortunately the government in the next budget retrospectively amends the law and again it is a double jeopardy to myself that i have won the case and in spite of that the government thereafter in the next budget brings upon a retrospective amendment so as to nullify everything so this was something which i found very very disturbing and at the same time i was finding that all these multinational companies for example if you see nestle for example honda for example uh, you know any of these multinational companies for example uh, colgate were at the same time remitting huge amount of money from am uh, amount of money from india in the guise of royalties and and again there was a big impact as far as foreign exchange reserves in india were concerned and this i wanted to have one gamut one dimension in my research and at the same time the other dimension of my research was government has to on a regular basis have a you know a concept of of continuous litigation management or also settling the matters in an amicable manner so fortunately you will believe it or not by the end of the uh, uh, you know end of the period when i completed my thesis it was such a you know a grace of god you can say the government of india thereafter came out with two important settlement schemes not only for indirect taxes but also for direct taxes and this was something one of my real you know which i had proposed in my thesis that the government should on a regular basis maybe every 5 years or 10 years come so that the burden on the courts see the courts in india today are overwhelmed or overburdened extremely and unfortunately this burden of the courts has only increased over a period of time because of covid friends the pendency at the high court and the supreme court has actually gone up multifold this was something which i had proposed in my thesis also when i had summarized and had come to conclusion that the government of india should redress these basic issues that you know uh, cer certain uh, matters for example uh, you know which are having uh, similar issues could be very well settled and at the same time government can earn a lot of money out of it and at the same time pendency at the courts can come down and i was so fortunate that as i was telling you both the settlement schemes for indirect taxes as well as the next year for direct taxes also came about hence giving me some okay. kind of satisfaction okay. yeah. that something yeah. congratulations uh, shardul that uh, this is what research should be i think it uh, it should have uh some impact of course uh, that you all may have done in the previous sessions how there are various types of research so one of the types of research where you have managerial implications where it's amazing if you do research and society or the country or in some way somebody benefits from that research you are adding to the pool of knowledge which already is there now let me please welcome dr uh, shrinivas and ayangar to the panel and um, uh, again we are very lucky to have him with us today i'll just quickly share his uh, cv but let me also share that uh, he is uh, uh, the head of a very very reputed institute you all may have heard of jamnalal bajaj institute of management studies where it's uh, next to impossible to get admission today i think and uh, he's an excellent uh, teacher and in spite of holding such a uh, uh, i mean position of such an august institute he is extremely extremely humble and uh, very uh, magnanimous in sharing his uh, knowledge with uh, young people 
He's a guide, an author, an editor, a researcher, a consultant, recipient of many, many awards and uh, for his academic excellence. Um, he's a sought after consultant in uh, uh, areas relating to strategies and um, is very good at uh, marketing techniques and uh, international business and all. Uh, it is uh, sheer poetry to be uh, listening to his uh, lectures. So over to you, uh, Srini. I would like to share. Uh, I would like you to share with the audience as to what made you get interested in uh, research activities and uh, what were the hurdles you faced while completing your PhD. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Madam, for the wonderful introduction. I'm glad to see it's a fantastic platform because always I love to associate with CA Institutes. That's why we started our AMP program thanks to Dr. Sangeeta Pandit. And we also done the GMCS program for last uh, 80, 90 batches. And whenever I go to the classes, one thing I found from the CS students, something different from MBA students, one is something great to be appreciated. Their commitment, seriousness is commendable. And I'm happy I could see some combination CA with Dr. Like Shadur Shah, Sangeeta Pandit. There's a fantastic forum to interact. And uh, uh, always it's my pleasure, even though I've graded 11 PhD students and another five, six were doing, authored 11 textbooks, published more than 100 plus papers. Uh, something like research, uh, research is quite a different skill. Ma'am, in fact, if you want to do PhD, there is a, uh, there is a huge scope for uh, research in books. There is a only profession there. Now, I'm, uh, if you're a good researcher, one example, see that when I was, uh, sorry, I joined a little late because I was doing some, uh, you know, session with Reliance. When, whenever I could able to listen, few minutes opportunity from Dr. Shadrul Shah. He's in a, a chartered account by profession, but now you see the confidence. He's going to suggest in the government what needs to be done. Where he get his confidence? Is it because of chartered accountant? There are thousands of chartered accounts in the market, but how many people get a confidence to propose some, whether people listen or not, that is different. I'm not coming to the second, there is a different layers, right? At least to propose, we should have certain confidence. And the confidence, how will you get it? Because he has done some genuine hard work by doing a research. Especially when you do research, there are multiple types of research. Madam said that. When you became today, whenever you go to the market, there are certain advantages, right? People call you professor, doctor, researcher, and suddenly wherever he goes, people like him, you have multiple portfolios. Especially those who are in the teaching, when Madam said, why you want to do PhD, what are the hurdles you face? First question, why I want to do PhD? If you are in a teaching profession, it is mandatory. That's a PhD. But not necessary if you have a PhD, you can be able to teach well. It is something like getting a driving license and driving a confidently on the road. Both are different. Am I right or wrong? Driving license, anybody can get. But will you be able to drive the car successfully in the road? For that, you should have that confidence. Research is the confidence where having a PhD is different from research skill. Please, both are different. Many people have a PhD, they may not have the research acumen. So if you want to have a good researcher, I would like to put it in what comma. You should be a good researcher. What type of research? Always you should do the primary original research. There are different types of research you can do. But when you do primary research, your confidence level goes better. Your authenticity of the research goes better. You can do secondary data also do the research. Nothing wrong about it. But if you want to become a original in nature, it should be primary research. It should be field research. It should be on the ground. I always used to say this example. Research will happen in every level, every category, every company, every industry, right? It happening from scientific research, everywhere there is a research. But the focus, weightage, importance to be given to research. That's what my intention is. One of the company, one of the world-class brand, get a complaint from customer. Whenever I buy vanilla flavor, my vital cousin gets started. Customer is made a confident saying that whenever I buy vanilla flavor, my vehicle doesn't get started. How do you respond to this reaction? Is it a fake? Or is there any correlation between ice cream and starting the car? 
third is there any consequences depends upon the flavor if i start if i buy a strawberry why will get start if i buy a vanilla flavor my vehicle cousin get start is there any problem with vanilla flavor with the ice cream or vanilla flavor ice cream with the automobile brand how do you respond to that if you are getting that uh, option can we ignore that these are all fake we can but what i said you can go to google you will find this example it's happened in tetrite one of the world class brand of automobile brand the problem was started from the customer and scale it up to end up to the top official of the company because everybody ignored it it is impossible there is no relation between cause and effect that's what we say in the research right when you do x there should be impact in y if you see from the birds view you don't get it anything nothing you will get zero in fact today i was sharing the same thing when i was discussing the strategy napoleon lost the war in waterloo why he lost the war he is a great warrior he never expected that the, that world it is one of the classical history in the war right it's a classical war in the history why napoleon lost in waterloo he is a great warrior wonderful team in this but why why he lost if i tell you, you won't believe he lost the war one of the reason is somewhere in the east of the down that means near uh, thailand malaysia there is a torrential tarpio was there because of that in waterloo at uk there is unexpected rain in the night because of the unexpected rain climatic change because of the sand quality change napoleon horses couldn't able to do the thing what it is supposed to do normal end of the day he lost the war something happened somewhere but it is impacted his performance if i put it in your layman language the world class entrepreneur tesla made a statement last week he never made anything he talked about his vision he said this year i am not going to make this year you don't get into new model of tesla he made only this statement you know what is cost to the company he lost 100 billion in 3 days the market recovered that is different one small three sentence change the industry change the company performance we don't know because today if you talk about the quality of the businesses is something phenomenally changes we don't know where it is and if you see from the bird view definitely you don't get solution please understand that you have to go to micro level to go to micro level one of the best tool is research you can do with the name of nomenclature of analytics that is going to be the future today you want to buy a trade stock research is already there today we have algorithmic automated that give predictive analysis which share you can able to buy or sell based on the history of 50 years am i right or wrong see these are all research even if i want to run a business aviation business what is my flight how many hours of flown number of kilometers flown how many passengers occupied what is average kilometer per kilometer what is cost to be need to be researched don't think research is something only meant for phd's academician please if you have it in your mind at least from today you recognize research is something beyond people may comment easily too much of analysis leads paralysis these are all good for here but when you come to reality we have to do research too much of analysis need to be done if you do 80% good research remaining 20% will take care of the remaining part end of the day why the problem escalated to the top senior level somebody texted the message in the box also it is available in the google i'll tell you the answer also because many people may not need to search the google i will tell you the answer actually they have done a research not sitting at a tetrad they went to the store where it the problem happened which is the type of the car and he mentioned very clearly whenever i buy uh, buy vanilla flavor my vehicle doesn't get start then they went to the store because normally if you see us hypermarkets are outside the city the size of the stores are 1 lakh square feet normal retail stores fastest selling skus 
stock opening agents always kept at the beginning of the store the slow moving items always kept at the other side it happened in india also only thing we don't have that much big size stores normally the store size double the size of football ground you can imagine that's the size of walmart stores so vanilla flavor 90% flavor people love vanilla rest of the flavors so the ice cream is kept at the beginning of the store so customers switch off the car go to the store and buy some compacts there is a genuine problem in the car on the wall when you switch off and immediately you need to switch it on the vital reason gets start there is a technical feature when you buy other flavors are kept at the other side of the store he take another 5 minutes to go and come back actually there is a problem in the vehicle on the power lock paper lock actually this company has done a research went to the field they realized that after the research they realized that the problem from the customer is genuine i will give another example one of the customer made the complaint to the customer department everybody has a washing machine everybody when you wash the floor there is a dirt comes in the washing machine that is a nature but this customer gives complaint every 3 days when the company address the solution they could able to remove more dirt from the washing machine वो मट्टी ज्यादा निकलता है अरे बोलो ये क्यों है यार कितना मट्टी निकलता है हमारा भी कपड़ा डालते हैं मट्टी आते हैं कचरा आते ही बट ये कस्टमर एवरी एक हफ्ते में कंप्लेन करते हैं देन दे रियलाइज्ड दे वेंट टू द कस्टमर व्हाई दिस पर्टिकुलर कस्टमर पर्टिकुलर मशीन इज हैविंग मोर चैलेंजेस देन दे रियलाइज द कस्टमर यूजिंग द वॉशिंग मशीन टू क्लीन द पोटैटोस ही इज नॉट यूजिंग द वॉशिंग मशीन टू क्लीन द क्लॉथ दैट मींस to remove the dirt from the potato that matti washing machine works much better rather than doing one by one then the samsung washing machine they made a same machine with a bigger hole so that the dirt can go out the washing machine which is kept for the washing the cloth not for potatoes then they realized there is a market to clean the potatoes they created a machine saying that this is a potato machine only different nomenclature the way shetty what will makes right you want samosa only the shape is different recipe remain same you want potato vada recipe same only the presentation is different then they made created the new product and launched to the customer and became overwhelming segment became a unique product i can tell you research is one of the finest area where you can try to learn something new and you know that in the business also most of the mistakes became innovation this research will help you to get something internal or external in source or out source professional agency or outsiders you will get plenty of challenges but as far as when you do the real original genuine work the confidence and quality of the research goes better when you download i'll tell you what are the challenges you find madam has when you do the phd what are the challenges 90% challenges i get getting quality data data nowadays nobody shares it because today data replaces the earlier days god data is wealth <laughs> earlier days god means gold oil dollar but today oil is replaced by data dollar also will replace near future by data take me word tomorrow oil became irrelevant that's why geo i was taking lecture just now with the top 50 guys of reliance l2 employees the geo brand name that is a mirror impact of oil i hope you might be knowing it oil if you write the word oil and see the mirror impact you will find the brand geo you know why the future oil is not oil it's data geo is all about data that's why they made voice into free and data became cost and near future i'm telling you If you see Uber is in mobility business, my sincere regret. Uber is not in mobility business. Uber is in the business of data. In fact, the way you use the data, I think nobody can use it. Domino's is in the business of data. Today, everybody do offering a business. Take the business. Last twenty years, the whichever business is there in the Indian world businesses, they are not there in the business twenty years before in the business portfolio. and which are businesses there in today's business they are all believed on data 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 what made google to become world class company by giving everything free nobody they charges how they could able to survive the business 
because of data. What made Facebook invest in 10% share with Geo platform? Today, 1% stakes worth to 6,000 crores. Why they are data? Why it could able to Geo could able to generate business of 40 crore customer acquiring highest in shortest period? Data. Why Facebook invested in Geo platform? Data. You tell me now where there is no data. Data is future gold. Everything became digitization. Getting a data is one challenge. How do you use the data is all about research. Again, I'll repeat. Data doesn't help you. The data became meaningful, it became information. Today, customer doesn't want data. From that, we want to extract the information. To extract the information, we should have a research skill. Because it is something like data mining and warehousing. If I give you data, I can give you corrosive of data. It won't help you. If you don't know how to use your data, your data became irrelevant. To use your data in a relevant, we require a research skills. The future is all about data scientists, digitization, industry 4.0, 5.0, artificial intelligence. You name any buzzword in the business. These are all believe on data and the all data need to be researched and properly need to be analyzed. So what are the challenges then? You have to do it on your own with the proper tools and techniques. If you don't, people have other jargons, right? India is full of jargons. When you don't have a source, outsource. People will give justification, India itself is outsourced. If you do much outsource, then what is your capability and competency? Most of the people do PhD outsource. How to collect data? Outsource. How to do analysis and interpretation? Outsource. They will become doctor. When they became, became a guide, when they get the students, they can't tell outsource, no? then your face value will go up. So the challenge is what you get. There will be a painful process to collect the data. It requires time, effort, collecting a relevant data, there is a cost. These are all the challenges. I think every researcher will encounter it at the during research process. This is nothing to the exception. These are all common to everyone. But over and above, if you want to become a good researcher, if you could overcome these obstacles, along with your portfolio, people also call you researcher. When you do quality research, when you publish, you become a publisher. Nine years ago, I research acha hai. Sardul bole ga me PhD acha kiya. Wohi PhD me kitab market karna ho. You become an author. Along with chartered accountant, along with PhD, along with researcher, he became an author. Nobody publishes. He has more money. He published on his own. Then he became publisher also. And then he said, I have done all the portfolio. Today he is giving a session. So now he will say in his profile, I'm an lecturer. I am an invited guest speaker. Then he said, I'm not doing only the chartered award. I'm going to give training to the companies. You become a trainer. No, no, I'm going to give industry. I'm going to give government of Maharashtra. Government of India, or you became a consultant. I think you already added 10 different portfolios. What basis? Not because of chartered accountant, because you are a good researcher. When Sangeeta Madam introduced me, multiple portfolios, the core mantra is researcher. If you are good in research, basement acha rahega, dasmala banake ja sakti. Basement teak rahega, Basement then you understand. This remains history. So I don't want to take more time because I already taken 25 minutes. Then Sangeeta Madam will blame me. Sir, there is a panel discussion. Group of people are there. So give chance to everyone. So now I wish to hear from others. Sorry, I have taken more time. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Always a pleasure to listen to you. And uh, yes, about that um, uh, washing machine uh, for potatoes, interesting story. And I know it's true. And uh, it is said, you know, in pursuit of information, we should not lose our uh, knowledge. And in pursuit of knowledge, we should not lose wisdom. And that is, I think, what it, uh, the research is. You start with data, which is information. 
and you add it to the pool of knowledge and the wisdom is when you can apply it for the betterment of society or for the betterment of the world or in your in a micro way in some way if it is useful to the organization where you are associated with uh, I, I can also share a small example which uh, i have come across is that i'm very much associated with tata memorial hospital where i do a lot of patient counseling and in india out of every 10 cancer cases seven is oral cancer and out of every seven oral cancer cases five is out of eating gutka because gutka is first of all not good for your health and secondly in the gutka industry is 70% uh, of the gutka packets which are sold are spurious they are made in uh, shady places you know because packaging industry has developed very well so you know tires and i don't know wires and all are dried and you put and then that is causing also a lot of uh, toxicity in the mouth and people are getting oral cancer and young people are getting oral cancer so Tata Hospital did a lot of research on that. And then they collected primary data, that is thousands and thousands of oral cancer patients. And they realized that there is one nexus. People who are, more people who are getting oral cancer are not aware of the ill effects of eating uh, gutka. It is a habit that they form maybe for some reason or the other, but they are not aware that there is an nexus between oral cancer and uh, gutka eating. And when they aggressively started having campaigns with the help of various NGOs, schools, colleges, and everything, uh, that they're uh, creating this awareness, the incidence of oral cancer over a period started decreasing because people were then were hesitant to develop this habit. And these are any nicotine-based substance. Once you develop the habit, it is difficult to break it. So this is how uh, research can... Uh, really have an uh, impact. And uh, as uh, even Dr. Sorel was saying, and Dr. Uh, uh, Srinivasan was also uh, stressing on, that collection of data is not easy and you need to put in a lot of hard work. So going back to what, you know, saying that some, uh, there are universal values, you know, how much ever progress you do, how much ever technology, uh, progresses, you will not start eating from your nose or listening from your mouth. Basic concepts remain the same. And I think the basic concept in research is hard work, hard work, hard work. There is no substitute for it. So if you have only if you have the time and the willingness and the uh, attitude to put in that work, I think then only your research would be meaningful. So uh, uh, Dr. Sorel, you have spent so many years in this uh, Sukhadia University. So can you discuss how, you, what was your contribution to the research field and how do you feel that uh, it has been meaningful? Yes, madam. Uh, you see, so far as my contribution is there to research, uh, that must have been very little. Uh, reason being that, uh, as I said in my uh, earlier spell of uh, uh, delivery, uh, you know, the ocean of knowledge, actually. Uh, the ocean of knowledge is perhaps much bigger than the usual ocean that we know. Usual water-filled oceans that we know. Knowledge ocean is much, much, much larger than that. Perhaps the limits of that ocean are not known to us. So if you ask me that what have been my contribution, I would say few drops, not more than that. But yes, uh, being a teacher, uh, maybe uh, a little sincere teacher, but that much I can only say. My students would better uh, evaluate me whether I was doing it genuinely or not. Uh, I have been uh, doing researches, uh, you know, on my own. And uh, of course, my research scholars through teams, we have been doing researches. Some of the glittering outputs uh, you have yourself mentioned while uh, talking about uh, you know, uh, and elating me by saying certain good words about me, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, my team of researchers, my students were there and I was there mentoring them, I was conferred the International Research Award when ICI started them in 2020. Uh, the first two awards uh, which were announced in that physically conducted audience in Delhi uh, went to our teams. So that was a little humble contribution. But what uh, I would uh, like further to add here is, uh, 
taking uh, you know lot of in insights from uh, Professor Srinivasan's speech uh, when he said that how chartered accountants should be benefited and uh, uh, you know in terms of their profession and all. I would also like to add here that you know doing a PhD in particular, okay, because uh, maybe that your res this research methodology workshop is focusing uh, also mainly on. Uh, motivating young chartered accountants to come to the formal doctoral degree arena. I would say that, uh, as was said before, very rightly, that researches are extremely important. They, they are very useful for societies. They are very use useful for solving any problem, in including that of business. In fact, broadly, broadly spoken, researches, uh, broadly spoken, are the ultimate uh, reason for any development in the world. So this is the importance of doing research and very rightly put before by Ayersa. I would only like to add here uh, for uh, the young researchers uh, listening to us about PhD. And that may be considered to be my little humble contribution to this society over my last about 40 years of uh, profession. That PhD gives you a training to become a researcher. It may not really lead you to come out with great conclusions. And I would also like to stress here that in all the universities, whom, whomsoever I know, in the country and abroad, what is the requirement that universities will be awarding doctorate to a candidate? Right. Maybe the youngsters would be really willing to learn that. What is that they should do in order to earn a PhD? Of course, so many things they need to do. Uh, Madam said about hard work. Yes, all those things. Commitment, uh, uh, you you said earlier. Uh, I, I also said that among chartered accountants, he has seen a lot of commitment. That is required uh, for uh, PhD also. All those things are fine. But the point is that if you become a trained researcher, then good contributions from you can be expected. And therefore, all universities in their ordinances, in order to award PhD, say, what do they expect from a PhD as an output? They expect, of course, they expect discovery of new facts. But they don't, they not only, they do not expect only this. They said, either you discover new facts, then they put or new interpretations of existing facts. Therefore, what have we just uh, before said also by the learned panelists, that if you have an eye to look at the old things in a new way, that also is a great contribution to research. And therefore, in guiding PhDs, maybe that I, I, as a teacher, have been contributing, like any teachers uh, used to contribute, in training them as the researcher. So to the young chartered accountants, I would like to say that, as was said uh, regarding business researches very uh, aptly by IASAB, that how things change when you go for business researches, particularly marketing researches. He was giving examples after examples, which are very interesting and conveying. Point is that, you people who are chartered accountants, you are in the domain of finance accounting uh, and uh, uh, you know consultancy in terms of uh, finance, uh, finances. If you do PhD, you learn how to do research. This learning is extremely important. That will not only benefit you in terms of your profile, that will not definitely put a glittering doctor before your name and will give you an edge over others uh, in your profession. Beyond that, as in my initial remarks, I was saying that your mental horizon changes. You now learn how to unravel new things from the same things, from the same arena where you were earlier also working. Now you are learned enough, you are skillful enough to identify new facts which are precious research outputs. So in that way, you know, the, the universities awarding PhDs become very important. And here, uh, I would, uh, with your permission, Madam, 
would like to add a word uh, before I conclude my this is spell of delivery. Which today, when uh, you know around five o'clock, we all met uh, on this virtual platform. We were just waiting for others to collect and informally discussing. I made that comment in a sporadic way at that time also. In accounting, uh, if you look at the international scenario, right? Uh, because I have little exposure to that, you know, uh, being the past president of Indian Accounting Association, and now at the moment being a member of American Accounting Association. Uh, the chartered accountant friends, I would like to inform you because you may not be aware that these accounting associations all over the globe are basically the associations of accounting academics. Uh, uh, you know, in all parts of the world they are. I am also the member of the global gathering uh, of the uh, accounting academic leaders. There, there I find that almost all countries, uh, uh, whomsoever I may know, they have their own accounting associations. In these associations, the accounting academics join hands and try to contribute to the academic cause. Among them, if you ask me, among them, uh, I mean, which one is maybe a role model, sort of, for we, the accountants? I would definitely name American Accounting Association. It's more than 100 years old. And the type of output in accounting knowledge, which American Accounting Association has, uh, and its all members have made so far, is matchless. They are at the moment publishing, uh, I mean, a rough idea I have about because the latest one can be searched on the Google. I think around 22 journals they are publishing only in our domain of financial, corporate accounting, taxation, management accounting, financial consultancy, business ethics, accounting ethics, accounting history, etc. 22 is a big number. And all these journals are world's almost top journals. Uh, and therefore, this is very important for us Indians, actually, to have a look at what they are doing. So what I was mentioning before also in an informal chat, with Madam, that in Academy of America, all universities, to best of my knowledge, I find that professors have a qualification of PhD and CPA. You all know about CPA, okay? Lot of my students also who are Indian Chartered Accountants have gone to US and they have done CPA. In fact, yesterday only, uh, I came across uh, information of a lady, uh, Chartered Accountant. She is known to me, uh, you know, uh, uh, for personal reasons. But at this platform where Chartered Accountants are sitting, I am very glad to share with you that this girl, uh, you know, she qualified CA in 2009 somewhere, not very old chartered accountant. And she was a ranker in Indian CA also, Indian CA examination also. But then she was married and uh, went to US with her husband. There she contest, uh, you know, wrote the CP examination. And I'm very glad to share with you. Uh, this is not only good news for me, but for all of you that she was the first ranker of CP. That tells us the strength of the Indian Chartered Accountant. I'm very happy to share this with you. Now the point is that there is a close association in accounting arena of which we all belong between the researcher and practicing accountant. And there actually the, the system of employment in US is that term employments are there. Like in our case in India, you joined a particular, like I joined a university. For long years, I was getting my promotions and staying this, at the same place unless I go outside. There they have term employment, uh, employments, appointments. And therefore, a lot of many CPAs, after, you know, making some practice, get an, a term somewhere in the university, go there, teach, do consult also at the same time, come back to the profession, and like that, they back and forth to them. What I'm trying to derive out of this phenomenon for you is we have already seen that the contribution to the knowledge of our subject, our mother subject, that is accounting, is being made maximum by Americans. Why? 
This is one reason that they have equally good exposure of both academic side of it and professional side of it. Therefore, this is very important, like uh, which I also was hinting my earlier spell. That if you ask me this question, that what does India need for developing accounting profession on behalf of this country and to contribute to the world, I would say we need a very, very large fleet of accounting researchers. We need first the number of uh, accounting researchers to rise like anything. And how do we do it? The best way would be that we should attract also the chartered accountants who have proved themselves to attain the degree, right? which is a very rare degree uh, with a lot of competition. And they are the best brains in the accounting profession to train them in uh, you know, giving them exposure of researches. Uh, one more point I'll make, and then I'll conclude for this as well. One chartered accountant, uh, 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 I mean, he's a pretty senior. He's of uh, our age group, Madam Chagita. Uh, he is now with PwC in California, uh, belonging to Andhra Pradesh. He was, uh, this, this I'm now addressing to the young researchers listening to me. How does it help that you dwell into research arena despite of being a good chartered accountant in addition to being a good chartered accountant, okay? This fellow, of course, he has been a very bright CA, qualified with meritorious record, very early days, very senior, highly experienced, at the moment in PwC at a higher position in a foreign country, okay? But... What I wish and pray for all of you and including you, the young researchers in India, uh, among chartered accountants, is to become like this fellow because, because of his academic bent, this fellow has been a member of the International Accounting Standard Board. And he, uh, he was with me in various uh, webinars and seminars talking about how do we do research in order to develop the international financial reporting standards. And those interested, uh, you know, stories are very interesting for we, the accountants here. Like one instance I would like to quote here and then we'll conclude. Uh, you all know about IFRS because they, they are now in, in form of India's more or less, uh, you know, merged. We, the Institute of Chartered Accountants India on behalf of our country have given consent for it and we are now almost converged with the IFRS. Of course, our name is India's. They say that even one small clause in the IFRS of, of a particular uh, topic was done after five year cons consistent research by a team of 10 bright, uh, uh, you know, professionally qualified accountants. In depth, extremely extensive globally extensive research to finalize one clause of an IFRS. This story was telling somewhere. Now please appreciate how can we as accountants contribute to our mother subject by stepping into the uh, research arena, by making our vision different from just the guidelines available, laws available, implementing them, okay, all these routine things that we do as a chartered accountant, that's our profession, no doubt about it, but going beyond it, searching better ways of doing this. You all know that these days, the whole world of accounting is grappling with the concept of fair value accounting. The IFRS has recommended it. It's a worldwide acceptance of fair value accounting now. But you people uh, are chartered accountants, you may be knowing it better than me. What sort of challenges fair value accounting is posing before us as a professional? But we all, all know, and the entire world has accepted it, that accountants shall have to think in terms of making fair value accounting more streamlined. So, dear friends, there we have a tremendous scope of research by whom? By we people. Those who know accounting from by heart. Because nobody other than us can really research pragmatically in that area. 
So I think I have taken enough time. Thank you, Madam uh, Sangeeta. Uh, Oh, uh, thank you, Dr. Sorel. Yes, it is. There is a lot of scope in uh, accounting standards to do research. Um, that's very true. Uh, uh, Dr. Srini, what I would like to ask you is that I don't want to frighten the participants that you uh, research is very tough and uh, not at all feasible and you need to put in lots of hours of work and be very strong in statistics and all. In a very simplistic way, I know you write very creative and innovative papers. Your last research paper, which was published in a very reputed journal, can you tell us the process in a very simplistic way, how you went about it and structured it and got it all together and got it published? Uh, you are on mute, sir. When you said put it in lucid language, I tried to follow that. Uh, today, Ice creams are coming from oven, not from refrigerators. Tea and coffees are coming from refrigerator, not from the oven. We are not questioning right or wrong. The purpose why I am saying this, if you are going to publish it, what are the process? You have to decide with whom are you publishing? Who is your target audience? with which publisher you want to publish, because everyone has their own style and structure. I may do some good research and I will have a certain flow or maybe practices. If I submit to any international journal of repute of ABDC, I may not fit into that. If I'm going to write to their standard, you can first, if you are want to become a good researcher, if you want to do any good publication, my first suggestion is target that See, that's why I said the example, right? Ice cream is coming from oven. But this is not possible few years before. Ice cream should come from refrigerator. Tea and coffee should come from the kitchen. But it is coming from today from oven, not from refrigerator. So, which is right and wrong, we are not questioning. Today, trend is changing. So, if you want to have a good publication, my suggestion is, as we said, every domain has the specific special journal and every journal has some category a plus b plus e a b d c there are multiple ranking scenarios no sir i want to publish in my nearby colleges which they don't have any standard that require a different standard then the process will change so process is very important so when you are talking about if you want to have a good quality publication whenever i write a case when I write a case for Emerald, their standard is different from IB, is absolutely different from Harvard. Page wise, length wise, quality wise, writing style, and the publication style, everyone has their own standard. So, my suggestion those who are beginners, if you want to start some any publication, first identify your domain area. I always use the keep the, you know, short and simple, kiss. That's the major thumb. Keep everything short and simple. And second, pluck the fruits which is closer to you, low hanging fruits. Right? And uh, first edition only you want to write a paper, you never published any paper. No, no, I want to try it into world class. CFA magazines. Rejection will be high. Always it is good to go with organic growth process. We are not questioning which is right or wrong. Again, I'm telling you, everything is right. I don't want to demotivate the beginners. So when you are starting, talk with your guide or talk with the industry expert. And if you have an ICA journal, the standard requirement is different from the business school journal. So you try to fit into the style and whenever you are applying to the journal, they will give the structure. You should write this number of words, this should be the expected, this should be the plagiarism report, this should be the references style, this should be the APA standard. You try to fit into the requirement of the respective journal. Then you will have a smooth sailing. As I said earlier, there is nothing right or wrong. Let's start the beginning journey as a good publisher. That is very important. Ma'am, I'm done. Okay, so that was a very different, uh, yeah. a very different approach taken. That you start with uh, first uh, identifying where you want to publish your uh, research paper. And then accordingly, you structure your topic, your research process, the bar that you want to have and everything. Correct. 
Okay, because I think every journal would have different uh, requirements and a different structure and all. Then you write with one journal and send it to some XYZ journal. The company's the expectations is different. Then the rejection will be high. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Better your target. If I know who is my target audience, who is my customer, I'll create a product based on their preference. If I'm going to sell it Rolls Royce to normal people, I can't convert. Probably he might be interested. We can say he's a potential future customer. The conversion will happen one percent. Better I know my customer. These are my customer. This is my product. If I could able to connect the dots. The success will be easier. Absolutely, absolutely. A, a very, very practical way. So I think we should read the uh, articles which are published in the journal where we want to publish. Understand the way which article, which are the type of articles that are accepted, and then accordingly our uh, uh, structure our. Uh, I mean, think of the topic and structure our process, or the flow of the paper and all. Uh, Normal structure, if you see. Uh -huh. This is a there is an industry template, right? The overall structure is IMRD. That means introduction, methods, research, and discussion. If you go any paper across the world, they will have these common skeleton will be same. If you say human being, there will be two eyes, one nose, and one mouth. If you go anywhere in the world, this become remains one. But the color, races, ethnicity, these are all differs based on the region. But the human being means this is a near common standard, right? There is no change into this. Like that, if you want to have a good research paper, that is IMRD. Again, I'll repeat: there should be introduction, method, research or results, and conclusion, discussion. These are the basic skeleton for any good research. Then you will have a literature review, variance analysis, gaps. These are all things will have differ place to place. Without objective, without introduction, you can't do. For having a good objective, you should have a good discussion. Based on the discussion, you should know what is your research methods, your methodology. Based on the methodology finding, you will have a discussion. That's it. Okay. Okay, uh, Dr. Shardul, what I would like to ask you is that in your process of teaching, writing, getting research papers published, doing your content writing and everything, can you share something how, because uh, you've done some research, it has uh, helped in uh, things becoming more creative or more impactful or something that way? Yeah, so I, I give you an example. Uh, I'm also associated with Mumbai Cricket Association. I am uh, heading the finance accounts and the tender committee at MCA. What we have always seen that in MCA, that is Mumbai Cricket Association, the primary objective was always to promote the cricketers. And while doing so, they also, you know, uh, were doing the same for the betterment of the entire sports arena. While getting this opportunity to head finance accounts and uh, the tender committee of MCA, we also realized that during the process, you know, when any organization is born, when any you know, not-for-profit organization is born, the objectives are always to be remembered. And one of the objectives which I realized, which was also there during the same uh, for uh, the cricket was also the incidental staff or the incidental activity, uh, activities were relating to cricket. For example, a lot of these cricketers also are supported by their families. A lot of these cricketers also need support of the groundsmen staff. They obviously need the stadium, etc. Because of some background of research and also finance, we were able to ensure that these cricketers also need some kind of, for example, insurance policies. They need sometimes financial support and not only for themselves, but also we need support for their families and at the same time the staff who takes care of the environment in which they used to play cricket. So because of, you know, again the research and the background of finance into it, we were able to get very, uh, we were able to speak directly to some of the best insurance companies. We were also able uh, to bring one of some of the finest, uh, you know, companies on board such that the overall scenario became very, very positive. Not only that, uh, I can give you another example. 
you know, uh, I'm active at Corporate Residents Association. And this is a very unique area of Corporate where we have almost seven, seven to nine gardens. And these gardens are very, very important for the livelihood of not only us as human beings, but they also have an ecosystem of, for example, a lot of birds, a lot of butterflies and the entire, you know, the natural uh, ecosystem is very important. We did, uh, because always they used to think only of numbers, what we did is we thought of building more and more forests. So we thought that, you know, because finances were always a big restraint. So bringing a bit of creativity, we, we thought of bringing urban forests uh, into, uh, you know, something like Kaf Parade. We brought Miyawaki into uh, Kaf Parade and we tried to bring more and more people to sponsor the same. So we brought in creativity, we brought, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, mind uh, such that people are more responsible towards the entire well-being of not only themselves, but also the environment around them. And at the same time, the organization became uh, very healthy in terms of, uh, you know, getting sponsorship for every tree which was planted. Not only that, we, uh, we also gave up with the idea of nakshatra. Uh, nakshatra, as you know, is a constellation and we brought about how these trees are actually going to be planted in the various parts of the gardens and uh, you know how they can also bring up with meditation uh, places where people can meditate and now mental well-being of people have become very important so because of research of uh, you know our financial uh, background we thought how research can also be applied in the overall financial uh, in overall well-being of the climate and when climate uh, comes into being i think nothing is more important then uh, taking care of the society through the well-being of the you know uh, the uh, the climate around us and hence we we try to bring in more and more people getting attached to the uh, you know for example the gardens and also now again on this coming saturday we are coming up of, of ensuring we bring about more urban forests into a very uh, limited area of uh, the area where we stay as far as entrepreneurship is concerned, I would uh, give another uh, good example of, you know, uh, of a chartered accountant. For example, Nimesh Kampani. Nimesh Kampani is the one chartered accountant, is someone which I really, you know, look up to. He is the person who is heading or is the chairman emeritus of JM Financial Services. This person has, uh, you know, uh, not much background in finance, but the kind of entrepreneurship Entrepreneurship, which as a chartered accountant bring, which he brings on the table. Similarly, if you talk about Rakesh Junjunwala, again a chartered accountant, but a great entrepreneur. If you talk about, for example, Motila Rotswal, a very, very humble chartered accountant. He came from a small village from Rajasthan, but a very, very good example of how chartered accountants can also become entrepreneurs and in their respective fields as entrepreneurs have done exceedingly well. Another example I would give is of Mr. Ninat Karpe. I don't know how much, how many of you all know Ninat Karpe. He's very fine chartered accountant and now he is into startup funding and also into venture capital list. So if you know of an organization called 100VC dot, uh, uh, it's called 100VC. And this particular gentleman, Mr. Ninat Karpe, uh, you know, a very fine chartered accountant, but again, getting into an entrepreneurship and get him, getting into the field of startup funding, getting into the field of, uh, you know, something which is very, very exciting. Now for young chartered accountants is the flavor of the day. So what I'm trying to do, uh, say friends, is that the research background, which we all have, and this research can also be applied in various means, whether it's commercially applied, sometimes it is applied even for the climate or for the well-being of the society. And it's something which we can really touch uh, in everybody's life. So, uh, you know, it is something which is very interesting. And at every point of time, if you bring about, you know, the depth of knowledge which you can uh, bring on the table as a background, because as chartered accountants, you have always been accepted. Uh, uh, you know, you are always supposed to know things in much further detail. And I think that's how you can also sometimes commercially exploit the same with the knowledge which you have. Thank you so much. Yeah, yes, yes, Sharzul, it's very uh, true that uh, if you do research, uh, the, your create, creativity juices uh, secrete much uh, better. You start looking things in a different way. 
uh, you are out of this herd mentality and you are able to look at things uh, differently. And yes, you uh, versatility also helps, uh, like, you know, someone once told me that a qualification should not be an obstacle to success. So you spoke about Ninad, he's a very good friend of mine. He even produces plays, very, very, uh, he's very much into liberal arts. So now this is a question I would like to Srini, uh, I mean, in uh, all B schools today, because of the high cutoff rates, it's it's uh, all it's mostly engineers. Ninety percent of our students are engineers from IITs and uh, and uh, from uh, uh, good engineering colleges, bits Pilani and all. Now these basic qualification is engineering, and they are going into marketing, HR, uh, finance, and all that. So do you think it is wise to diversify from your uh, core qualification and uh, succeed in that? Uh, Dr. Srini, you are on mute. In fact, it is appreciated. In fact, most of the premium B schools also taking on engineers. They are not against the engineer. In fact, they will get the versatility because when you come to the placement, multiple company coming to the campus, they need the variety. It is like a gender. Also, they need some variety. They want more female candidates into there because certain profile, certain domain suits to their gender specific. Certain programs, when they come to the campus, for example, especially Certain industries, certain companies may not pay more, but they require more skills. And that computer skills are fitted into non-engineering background students. No, certain students are very good in analytics. They need engineering background. So we have to know how to balance. It depends upon the institute mission, the nature of the program, and how they could be able to connect the industry. Again, it is all about connecting the dot. Nobody is right or wrong. Again, I'm telling you, every market is for everyone. I strongly believe even if it is a commerce student, they are fitted up, they can do something. Market for everybody. But only thing, how the institute is positioned themselves, IIT means engineers, NITI means engineers. They take only with engineering background because the program meant for engineers with the MBA background. We are not questioning whether right or wrong. But certain institutes targeting certain audience, for that we will have to require a versatile quality of the students. Uh, no, my, my question, uh, Dr. Srini, is that so your core qualification is engineering, and then you are getting it become like uh, uh, Dr. Raghuram Rajan. Madam, he became the Raghuram. governor from Madam. engineering background. Um, uh, Dr. Anade, the best economist of India, he's from engineering background. So do, uh, do you think chartered right? accountants can also do uh, other jobs, or should they stick to accounting and job finance? That is a wrong concept himself. Chartered accountant also, why there is also, why can't? We can't able to add a value addition. For example, today I was discussing with somebody that uh, Elon Musk's qualification is a physics. And today he is making a future car, future, uh, you talk anything future, he talks about. What way is physics relevant to do with this uh, automobile of Tesla? So qualification, nothing to do with this. If you have a guts, confidence, you can always right, think with yeah. knowledge anytime can be acquired. In there are many successful people having background without uh, academic also. So we are not here to questioning anything which is right or wrong. If you have a capability and competency, because when you talk about strategy, we always say capability and competency can be built. It is not inborn quality. Today, Shadrush Shadur, to take a live example, he is a chartered accountant, he acquired the skill of research. Tomorrow, he can acquire the research of research also to the writer also. I never thought I never become a teacher in my life. So the people who get the passion, what they want, 10% people, remaining 90%, they get what, but they, they also excel. That's what I want to say. 10% population only, they get what they want. Remaining 90%, they never get, but everybody is successful in the career. That's what I believe. See the positive side. Anybody can do any work as far as the commitment is there, as far as your sincerity is there, as far as if you could able to build the competency, they can do that. Take the example, when Tata took over that, you know, TCS, you know, Chandrasekharan sir, many questions in the market, whether will he able to do? He is from a TCS background. What is relevant to Tata? Chairman. But it is proved that he can be able to do because he's coming from TAS. TAS is talk about process. For them, product comes second. He can turn around automobile also. He can turn around r &D also. He can turn around TCS also. Product doesn't worry about it. It talks about only the process. To make the process convenient, you can build the capability and competence. 
yeah, yeah, very true. Uh, like even our, I, of, our, our IS officers and all, they shift from forestry to metals and all, all kinds of domains because I think basic concepts are the same wherever, whichever vertical you are in. So if your basic concepts are strong, I think you can tackle, uh, it need not be only accounting and finance. You can go to other fields also if your interest takes you there, if your passion takes you there. And yes, what Dr. Srini says, it's very rare that you are in doing something that you enjoy. So if you can find a, a meeting of working in an area which you enjoy, which you feel you have an aptitude for. And again, knowing yourself also, I think is very, very difficult. We are so preconditioned. I was as to, with Dr. Mukesh Batra. At the age of 65, he learned swimming and uh, learned started singing. And he started a business by the home. It is all about passion. Nothing else. If we have a passion, we can able to acquire any skills. Skills can be acquired. For doing acquiring a skills, you have to put an effort. Knowledge nothing to do with uh, experience. Knowledge doesn't help you. If you want to become a swimmer, you read the book, you will acquire the knowledge how to swim. But with that knowledge, you can't swim. To swim, you should have that, you know, hands on experience. And you should like the swim. You should like yes. to swim. Yeah. And we are preconditioned. Very often we think what our parents thought about us. We think what our siblings thought about us. We think what our friends think about us, our peers, our colleagues. We really don't know ourselves. So a lot, it's very tough. And each one is unique. I think it's amazing how all our faces are different. Our fingerprints are different. So we really have to do a SWOT analysis to understand where our interests lie. And it would be wonderful if we can... Uh, earn in a vertical which we enjoy, actually. And uh, uh, I, I would like to ask Vishal to unmute yourself, please. Can you do that? Uh, Vish, uh, Vishal, sir, can you unmute yourself? Mr. Vishal Verma. Is it possible to unmute yourself? Okay, uh, perhaps I didn't have right to do so. Okay. Uh, he, has Mishra, right to to chat. Huh? he has a right to chat, not to speak. Um, Mishra ji, aap hai wahan pe? Uh, whoever is the coordinator, can you help the uh, participants to unmute themselves? Achha, aap phir chat mein hai, Vishal, uh, uh, Vishal sir, because we are curious to know your background because the questions that you are asking are wonderful questions. So can you please put something on your background? Meanwhile, whoever is the coordinator of this uh, panel discussion, can you help to see that the participants unmute themselves? And uh, uh, Madam, I think we should now at this stage encourage participants to ask questions. Yes, but they cannot unmute themselves. They are asking questions, but it would be better if they can unmute themselves. Okay, Vishalji, you have Yeah, they can unmute, PhD they can switch on their Very good, very better. good. Uh, I'm, I'm just enrolled four to five months ago. Yes, yes. So, so your journey has just started, Vishalji, and that is why you are asking questions about yet correlation, concept test, regression, kabhi, ANOVA kabhi okay. use karna hai and all that. Okay, I'm sure that you will have to study quantitative methods. So generally when you're doing PhD, you have to attend that many lectures on quantitative analysis techniques and all and oh, sub clear ho jayega. Dr. Sorrell, can you suggest some simple book on statistical techniques uh, uh, related to uh, which technique to use for uh, under what circumstances? Dr. Sorrell, okay, I think we have lost Dr. Sorrell. Uh, Dr. Srini, can you suggest any good textbooks or literature for statistics? Yeah, hundreds of books are available. Only it's just started four months before, let do your proper literature review, objective clear. Then you can worry about which test to be used. That is comes from the letter of the part. Because okay. you come to the, within four, five months, if you come to the analysis, I really appreciate it. You are like a Tesla speed. <laughs> Actually, you are asking, you know, a desert at the beginning of the starters. Uh -huh. Yeah, the things which you talk about comes in the middle, not at the beginning. But still, there is a good, wonderful books are available. Google himself gives you teaches good. Go to IIT Karakpur, uh, video films available on uh, all the statistical tools. I strongly suggest go to Google, YouTube, 
and maybe before the discussion, I may share the link also. If I get it, I'll share it. Because IIT Kharagpur created a wonderful online lectures that uh, models are available. राइट तो लेक्चर क्लास <laughs> yeah very kind of you and uh, what uh, what you said is rightly that in uh, just in 3 4 months you can't start thinking of which test to apply no not so long to way to go you need quality data collection i think you start with collecting quality secondary data ma'am in panel discussion we can't take lecture then it's called what panel discussion <laughs> yeah so uh, so uh, dr verma welcome to our uh, phd club and we are waiting for you to join us so maybe 4 5 years down the line in one of the panel discussions you would be the panelist uh, addressing uh, the others and motivating them also to uh, do phd so can you type is to what motivated you to uh, do your doctorate uh, mr verma Uh, so can one of the participants put on chat if uh, they are satisfied with the workshops which happen and with the panel discussion which is happening and uh, do you want uh, any specific uh, area that we explore uh, yes uh, niren can you uh, put on chat uh niren can you put on chat are you liking the panel discussion do you want anything specific yes anybody wants to put any more questions on chat कुछ मजा नहीं आता है डॉक्टर श्रीनी पुट सम एनर्जी और पैशन नाउ इनटू दिस डिस्कशन आई थिंक वी हैव लॉस्ट इट इन अ वंडरफुल क्लास तो इट कैन नॉट बी वन साइडेड सो प्लीज पुट ऑन चैट व्हाट यू व्हाट यू वांट स्टिल ओके व्हिच दैट विशाल विशाल जी इज स्टिल विद द स्टैटिस्टिकल टेक्निक्स ओनली Okay. Okay. Nirena has said that it was a pleasure listening to our panelists. But uh, thank you so much, uh, Nirena. Uh, which statistical techniques uh, or tools to apply for predictive analytical, or we can say, if you want to get comparison between crude oil and cement production. So uh, yeah, and that is what research is all about. You start with something in your mind. that uh, uh, there is some there is an excess or there is no nexus and then you arrive at a finding and then you realize that that nexus is not only between the two but a third parameter or some other parameters is influencing that nexus so yes there are a lot of analytical tools available 
and in you have just completed three four months of your uh, phd uh, 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 registration so what dr shrini said yes you will have to learn each and every technique properly and uh, normally i do not know how your phd process will be but correct me if i'm wrong dr soral if you are doing phd you need to know uh do some write some papers or uh, give some uh, small tests or something and study in depth statistics a bit and understand a little bit of uh, the various measures on the various uh, techniques in statistics and then you understand the kind of data you are collecting and then uh, applying the statistical tools would come at a much much later stage Yeah, madam. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost connection for five minutes. No, not at all. I have joined again. I couldn't listen to the question. Can you kindly repeat the question? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Mr. Vishal is really asking quality questions now. So the the another question of his was about uh, one was of ANOVA and one is about uh, statistical techniques or tool to apply for predictive analytical comparison between crude oil and cement production and all. so i really i asked him why how come his questions are at such a high bar and he has yeah. said that he is doing his phd so okay. uh, it's uh, such a great pleasure because it was ardul uh, also was uh, urging that all chartered accountants and even yeah. you all who were uh, 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 disclosing how there are so many cpas who are also doctorates and there is a lot of connection between academia and the accounting world all over the world but not so much in india uh so uh, yes so uh, uh, vishal ji is saying yes he has gone through a lot of literature and he has recently completed his mcom and now he wants to know a little bit more about uh, statistical techniques and all and uh, dr shrini has been kind enough to share some uh, uh, urls about where you will get a lot of information about uh, statistical techniques so dr soral can you throw some light on this aspect yes. because sure. i think this is the aspect which frightens people yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh vishal uh, congratulations you have already started doing something which all of us here in the panel are trying to motivate chartered accountants about and the way you are asking very good questions it, it appears you are a very promising uh, person and uh, moving in the right direction now when you have asked about the statistical tools and their applications uh, let me tell you uh, uh, that this is again is a major area to look into when we dwell into research okay but there is a great word of caution that i think at this moment of time because uh, i do not know exactly what type of data you said that crude oil and some other product uh, madam mentioned uh, the comparison into that that is very fine but what exact type of data were collected and all that perhaps your mentor or your supervisor can better know i do not know that so therefore keeping in view you know that uh, what type of data it might be dr so dr yeah. soral sorry to interrupt i'll just read out his question yeah please statistical techniques or tools to apply for predictive analyticals or we can say if we want to get comparison between crude oil and cement production comparison between crude oil and cement production he said na no, right right mm -hmm. so i got it even better now so we shall the point is that uh, the first thing which i was uh, even before trying to tell you is that at the moment where when you have started your phd you mentioned four five months before you have got registered okay uh, what i would advise you is that rather than at this stage you know in you know in my common understanding of a candidate who have just finished five months you see Uh, i have guided around 27 candidates already who have got phd's and seven are already working i have little experience in knowing about the progress of phd scholars keeping that in mind i am telling you that at this stage if you have just finished your five year uh, five months uh, in uh, the domain of phd it is too early to think about applying exact tools for statistical analysis right in general i would say so rather than that my first advice to you would be that you still once you have started working on this and yeah, you are trying to make comparisons between crude oil and cement production uh, data that's good but you now at this stage must do an extensive review of literature first like in my earlier spell of delivery i was telling 
that there are 22 around accounting journals which the american accounting association is publishing right that was one example like that worldwide we have large number of journals my advice to you would be two uh, two phased first is that a, a, for a promising candidate like you who is so active in looking into the things you are already a chartered accountant you have done your mcom also and you are so uh, briskly coming ahead in doing your phd work like the questions are uh, indicating there is a classification of journals which is internationally reputed and that is known as abdc classification it is abdc classification which is one of the most reputed classifications of the journals in the world my advice to you is that you search uh, about abdc on the google try to find find out some a category or b category journal in our domain of accounting because they are international journals some of them may be indians but generally they will be from outside india please go through some articles from the a or b category journals published okay maybe you spend say roughly speaking another one month i don't know how much time uh, do you have for phd's but you study for these articles you know uh, with an open mind don't get engrossed into the routine statistics etc see how they are using the statistical tools making comparisons and all this is one piece of advice another is that when you say that you are looking forward to do predictive analysis okay so the commonly available tools among the commonly available tools is the multiple regression multiple regression you will find facilities for Im implementing multiple regression on almost all softwares including spss amos uh, statecraft etc okay but my word of caution to you is that applying multiple regression would be definitely useful for you uh, to begin with to begin with but once you go for applying multiple regression kindly go through the tidbits of this technique first because to my little knowledge lot of misuse and a uh, defective use of multiple regression technique is being made by researchers around uh, you know the country because there are certain basic limitations and assumptions of multiple regression like some of them are that in case the data are not found to be linear you should not apply multiple regression to my mind large number of researchers without testing the data linearity are jumping into multiple regression in case data are not found to be linear one should first go for transforming data using some econometric tools in that case you should study for some limited time right say 5 7 days some uh, core books on um, econometric like one famous book is by kotsunyani yani right there are many other book, books also basic transformation of data then converting them into uh, you know multiple regression equations and all that is one further to that if you find that you have little more depth and time to continue uh, in research further then two more uh, tools i would like to suggest to you one is the sem right students used to call it sem these days this is systematic e equation sequential i'm sorry sequential equation modeling these days uh, you know even better analysis of the variables is done by the sequ uh, sequential equation modeling sem they call uh, there is a software amos a m o s that's also available uh, sem can be run on this software and many other softwares for that matter so these are some preliminary broad answers from my side to you thank you madam uh, sangeeta please uh, uh, yes so i do know that this panel discussion is about research but we know in life we cannot look at things in silo we have to have a 360 degree of things and all and look at things holistically so uh, research goes hand in hand with other issues in your life you know uh, your career your likes your uh, aptitude uh, your uh, financial uh, needs uh, your your responsibilities and you have to look at things holistically where you stand today and where do you want to go and there is one very interesting research paper which i read in a very reputed journal is those who had some goal plan 
those who had uh, jotted down what were their strengths they have or uh, what are they looking for in life they somehow after uh, 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 means uh, this was a research paper written by some, somebody in a very reputed university they asked students uh, who were passing out at the of the age group of 26 27 to think where they would be 20 years down the line and and how do they plan to reach there and so if you have some kind of plan in your mind perhaps then maybe that research would have more of a direction more meaningful because you know it's like you know if you go suppose you fly from bombay to delhi and from delhi you have to go to some uh, uh, place where your meeting is you need to know the address and you need to know um, uh, and uh, to decide how are you going to go are you going to take the metro or the uber or is a car coming to pick you up you need need to know the address the route and all that so similarly i think very successful people is its success is not an accident it is not luck it is uh, they have planned it they have they had some goal they had some strategy in uh, mind now there is one another very interest, interesting book you know uh, some uh, strategy safari where there are 10 schools of thought of different 10 different uh, types of strategy so somewhere you have to uh, decide uh, when you're doing research what do you want from life where do you want to reach uh, what is your uh, career plan and when you have it written down because again and again i keep repeating very often we are preconditioned with what the others expectations are of us we have to understand what we want for ourselves and because only if we are happy we can keep others around us happy and dr soral and i were discussing uh, actually uh, i i mean uh, dr shardul i know him for many years dr shrini i know for many years but i uh, spoke to dr soral uh, for the first time two to two or three days ago and our thoughts really matched and we were just discussing that today there are many chartered accountants who are very frustrated you know they think that just after you get a degree you become you pass your final ca you can start practicing have an amazing practice and you have everything in life status money everything it doesn't happen it's uh, there are some chartered accountants who are very successful and some who are very frustrated and many also who enter academics some do very well and some don't do very well so dr soral uh, the kind of uh, influence you have had in mentoring students and making them so successful and happy in life can you give some tips as to how do you chart out your career how do you uh, go in and how do you decide to do research as such because it should be linked to the other aspects in your life like very right madam uh, yes uh, when we we had the initial discussion with each other uh, this point came up and uh, both of us were having the same view in fact both of us had the same experiences despite of being uh, in different walks of life and uh, the point is that uh, with the the point cropped up uh, during our discussion also particularly regarding chartered accountants young chartered accountants uh, we being in the academy you know uh, teaching accountancy for long years large number of our students uh, you know have qualified cas the i mean of their of their different varieties some of them have been very highly meritorious like one of uh, my old student uh, at the moment is, was a first attempter uh, chartered accountant some 25 years old now he is a director in new york stock exchange so see the plight and uh, many uh, i mean uh, completed their uh, article ship couldn't qualify finally and shifted many uh, other types they qualified uh and they are in main our focus at the moment and after qualification they had some expectations from their career or their life that once i become a chartered accountant this is what i am going to get but uh, later on they found no the world was different and uh, they got frustrated and they said sir where to go bahut socha tha sahab badi mehnat hui mere itne attempt lage mere parents ke paas paise nahi the still they said nahi tum naukri mat karo ca karo panch attempt mujhe lag gaye final mein इंटर में भी लग गए मेरा इतना पैसा हुआ मैं बॉम्बे गया हमारे यहाँ से बॉम्बे आते हैं नॉर्मली स्टूडेंट्स हु लुक फॉरवर्ड टू डू ए क्वालिटी आर्टिकल शिप दे सेट एवरीथिंग आई डिड एंड नाउ आफ्टर क्वालिफिकेशन देर इज नो फ्यूचर राइट सो दी दी पॉइंट इज दैट व्हाई इज इट हैपनिंग एंड वॉट कैन बी सोल्यूशन टू दिस प्रॉब्लम एंड वॉट यंगस्टर्स शुड टेक यू नो 
away from uh, this discussion so far as some uh, tips we can uh, pass on to them being little more elderly to them in age the point is that which was uh, coming up in uh, discussion just before when uh, uh, madam was asking uh, shrinivasji regarding uh, you know that why people are shifting from you know profession to profession engineers going mostly for mba and there are cases like uh, I, i just would like to add here that you all know about the famous comedian jaspal bhatti he was basically an engineer an electrical engineer appointed in punjab government and later on we all know because of his some other career so the whole point is which i would like now to uh, say in reply to ma ma madam's version is that life never ends dear friends and you also may not be sure what particular talents are there in you what actual skills may take you to heights in fact i would say nobody perhaps knows this nobody perhaps knows this so what is the answer to the problem answer is that you always be uh, hopeful never lose hope in life till the god has given you an existence uh, on the earth hope should continue to remain there you have so many talents and you never know which one of the talents that you have can take you to the top of the world because there are examples after examples which perhaps we don't have time to quote you all know them so the point is that always try to try to rise always try to explore for better opportunities always try to look in look into your own talents your own passion the other avenues uh, in uh, the, his earlier uh, spell of delivery shardul ji was mentioning very interestingly that you know people have variety of talents in them and uh, you know like he himself is as madam was mentioning that he has so many feathers in his cap okay he is with cricket association i think he is not only a financial expert there he must be playing cricket himself therefore they have liked him to join it it goes without saying it right so look at him also in a way see he could try so many things it was mentioned that uh, he is doing uh, research on jainism also despite of being a chartered accountant okay going to a jain philosophy uh, is it not a great diversion i know one professor uh, uh, dear friends who uh, was a management professor and uh, uh, he was pretty uh, elderly to me i think 20 years elder to me like he uh, at a later stage in his life much later stage when he was an accomplished professor in man of management the students used to like his deliveries and all i was really taken aback to know and he was very good at econometrics also what i i mentioned <laughs> very <laughs> much taken aback to know that he started learning dances a male person and classical dancing he is excelled like him so the point is try to explore your talents don't lose hope ever if you are a, a chartered accountant you find that you have some bent for academics take some inspiration from sangeeta madam after so much accomplished uh, you know career goals she had she now says that at this elderly age she is enjoying academics she is a prominent in a very prominent management institute head of one of the departments uh, in finance and now enjoying academics here she again finds that she is getting a better edge on her own achievements in life that is the point so say uh, to uh, come to a particular point in the whole discussion if you are a qualified ca you find somehow that professionally you, your accomplishments are not so well satisfying also explore that can you contribute something to academics because i am from that uh, side that arena uh, what i was also discussing with sangeeta ji yesterday that in academy in indian conditions actually in indian universities in particular because i come from the public university background i may talk little better about that we need very good number of bright chartered accountants as teachers one more thing which uh, 
maybe some of you, the youngsters may not be knowing, but you must know, <laughs> is that last year in India, there has been a major development in favor of the Chartered Accountants uh, Institute and others also. That now the CA degree has been recognized equivalent to postgraduate degree by the UGC. Earlier it was not. This gives a clear hint to all the Chartered Accountants fraternity that government has a policy to motivate Chartered Accountants to come to academic profession. I mean, it, it's very straight, uh, uh, you know, a recommendation, a very straight rule from the side of the government to clear, clarify the policy. And if you ask me, because naturally, because of, uh, you know, my tenure in the universities, I have been selecting assistant professors, associate professors, professors all over the country uh, in accounting, including public universities and private universities and PSCs, etc. That, that was part of my job. Uh, if you ask me that what type of uh, opportunities chartered accountants, qualified CAs have in academic world, I would say they do have very good opportunities. They have very good, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, things to achieve in academics. They can really shine in academics like anything, provided but the thing which we have been discussing all over these last two and a half hours. And very frankly speaking, right? And, you know, uh, uh, without any disregard for anybody, that you have to develop a bent for academics. Part of that bent will be uh, nurtured by your interest in research. So if you find that by uh, deviating a little or deviating to any extent, fully deviating, 50-50 deviating, anything, because large number of chartered accountants have been doing it, okay, to academics will be better for you. You have some lust for this. Start dwelling into research. Join PhD program somewhere. Do that PhD with good quality, about good quality definition. So many things have already been said. And try to, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, excel into this area. I have already told you about that chartered accountant who could become member of IASP. You know about the reputation of a person who becomes a member of IES, you know, he was a chartered accountant like you only. Right, so this is what I'm, I'm trying to tell you, that there is a lot of scope for you, but please believe one thing, which I would like to repeat in and conclude, that joining teaching profession is as hard as, or maybe little harder than qualifying CA examination. Because sometimes I find that some of my own students actually, they once have, I asked them, okay, they said, sir, can you just, uh, because 10 o'clock we go for two hour office. So can we have some guest lectures uh, in your college for postgraduate students, particularly in taxation, because they, that was their domain. Our colleges used to start at seven o'clock in the morning. I said, yeah, I would very much love to. You have a lot of experience come. My experience there was, I mean, that may be very specific to few persons, but I just want, want to warn the young chartered accountants against that. What I found was they took the teaching very non-seriously. They said in taxation, I cleared in one attempt my marks, I got exemption in taxation in chartered accountants. So these are young chaps of doing MCOM or BCOM, no issues. I can answer any question. They were utter failures as teachers. So please think, if this is a different domain where you need equally hard work. But if you do, the sky is the limit. Thank you, madam. Very true, uh, uh, Dr. Sorrell. Any career, success in any career, we go back to it that we need uh, hard work. And uh, of course, just as uh, Dr. Srini said that every journal needs a different approach to get when you are looking for publishing your papers. So also every career, I think, needs a different approach too. Uh, I, there is one question on chat and uh, the way the questions are asked, it looks like the participants are really very much into research and are already uh, doing a lot in research. And I hope they are not finding this discussion very uh, uh, basic. 
so this question from Kishore Kumar uh, Goyal is that my research is on rule of law in India, critical analysis. And following my topics uh, of research paper, it depends on various historical events and formulate, uh, formulation of various law across the world and same as well incorporated in the Constitution of India and uh, um, as observed, and if not following, even not understanding the same. Can you suggest authenticate source for my studies or books related to it? Okay. Okay, uh, what I would suggest, Kishore Kumar, uh, this is a very, very specific question, but I think uh, the WRC would be having your name and your uh, email ID and contact. I will ask them to be in touch with you. And I'm sure uh, Dr. Srini has access to a wonderful library. Dr. Soral would have access to Sukhadeya University Library. There are many libraries who would be willing to give you access to books because uh, knowledge should be free. I mean, and if you want information, uh, you want access to data, it would be easily available. Also, we, we could send you some uh, good uh, paid websites where you could uh, uh, apply for and you can get uh, good uh, information also. And they are not very, ex very, very expensive too. But one of the things when you do research, it is nothing to do with uh, the particular candidate he asked the question on law. The thumb rule of the research is keep the objectives clear. And if you keep this type of topic, you know, we have to do PhD, how to do PhD. This, this type of, you know, uh, because uh, it has too many objectives. I couldn't understand that what is the purpose of doing this particular topic. You can't expect single law to the entire world. If 50 kilometer people travel, the law will change. And the uniform civil code also become challenging. So when you do the research, I think, uh, you know, when you take uh, any research topic, take a topic simple. Narrow it down. Take Narrow it down. One topic, like a funnel approach, and go in depth within the topic. For example, in, I don't know how many objectives are there. It's absolutely confusion. I'm getting it. Forget about me for doing the research. Even I couldn't understand the topic also. Why do you want to bring this law which is across the world, across and all? I don't know. When you do the research, you should be very specific, sir. And I suggest keep the research as simple as it is because if you keep this type of topic, you'll have to do research. Only how to do research. You can't get into the topic only. You'll take another three years for that. If you want to do anything law specific, be specific which law you want to do. Specific to industry. Much more easier. Then go more in depth. This type of question even difficult to answer also. Forget about doing a PhD. Uh, uh, Kishore, sir, is this your PhD topic or are you writing a research paper on it or what? What is it? Uh, Madam, uh, I would also, in the meantime, uh, uh, would like to add something here, what Professor Shini has said. Yes, sir. Like one of my research scholars, okay, he also worked in the this same direction, okay, the legal implications and the comparison of law around the globe. But what was the topic? The topic was Salaries, taxation all over the globe was the topic. So this fellow collected only salaries, taxation law, or including the Indian Income Tax Act and some 10 other countries' uh, salaries, taxation law. And he took almost three years in analyzing all aspects of it, including the opinion survey of professionals all over the globe, taxpayers, and then he concluded. So this much specific you have to be in order to do any research. Maybe that if you are trying to look at the philosophies, how laws are implemented, good, no, no harm. But yes, very rightly said, you have to be very, very specific because unless you achieve a certain depth uh, while coming out with conclusions, there is no point. You can't, can't actually complete a doctoral level of research. That was my point. Thank you. Uh, yes, I think your statement of objectives, your purpose for research, your need for the study, all these questions should, should be framed first. And then maybe you will come to some specific area, what Dr. Sorrell said and Dr. Srini said also. It cannot be so wide. Uh, okay, you finish one and then you can, uh, maybe the same model can be applied in, the, in another way to a, a similar, to a different law also. Uh, so, uh, 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 Mr. Kishore Kumar Goel, have we answered your question a little bit? And also, of course, we will help you in getting your data.
uh, okay, so I think I would like to end the discussion with just a summary from all of us. Uh, I would start with uh, Dr. Shardul in, uh, in about five minutes. Uh, and I, I, I believe that the, part, the participants are, at, uh, are very good and uh, they have all not only, I mean, they have done research, they have exposure to research and all. So uh, keeping that in my mind, being mindful of that, can you uh, conclude this panel discussion, Dr. Shardul, as to um, uh, the benefits of doing research or any specific way you can, uh, tip you can give them how to do research? Yes, I would only like to say is, uh, again, I'm a very big fan of uh, our Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, and I have seen at every stage, right from his first term, and also now in the second term, he has brought about a very radical way of thinking, and that particularly different way of thinking also always motivates me into research. For example, he talks about Make in India. So when we say make in India is there was always something unique about India. There were always trends in India, but because of few years of some things which we could not do, China always overtook us in every way of manufacturing. What I have now seen is, for example, in the area of make in India also, the prime minister of our country has in fact brought in so much of incentive, so much of enthusiasm among people including change of tax laws, which says only 15% tax will be for new manufacturing companies. I feel a lot of research can be done also on the ways and areas of thinking by our Honorable Prime Minister. For example, I give you Make in India. Secondly, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Although we are talking about Prime Minister, he talks about cleanliness. Now, when we talk about cleanliness, it brings about a lot of radical way of thinking even at the top level of prime minister. Why? Because if we keep up a hygiene clean, automatically less medicines will be required. And at the same time, it brings about a lot of social issues which we can solve. So again, a very, very great uh, encouraging point which we can learn from the prime minister. Recently, Digital India. If you see earlier, uh, friends, you know, one rupee which was collected from the people, a very small amount was actually spent on the people. But the Prime Minister brought in the Digital India where most of these Jan Nan bank accounts were connected. And there was a radical shift in banking in India. Again... Oh, okay, Dr. Shardul, the point that you want to put across is that creativity, innovative, all that you can have, develop that approach if you look at it from a research bent of mind and, it, and it can be done by the leadership of a country. Absolutely. I give you an you know, although today we are talking about YouTube, today we are talking about Twitter, today we are talking about Facebook, but the Prime Minister talks of going back to radio. So, you know, again, this is something that it is an out-of-box thinking, it is a research that, you know, you have to penetrate the masses and you can also do things differently. Very true, very true. Dr. Soral, very quickly, because yes. we have run out of time, yeah, can yeah. you con con give your conclusion about so the friends, panel discussion? Yeah. Friends, uh, in conclusion, what I may say from my side is, uh, to the uh, to the audience which is present, which are young chartered accountants, that do think in the direction of moving into research, do think in the direction of moving into academics. Mm -hmm. This will benefit you in your CA profession also, and would also give you an edge over others, right? Both commercially and intellectually, and in a self satisfaction way. Mm -hmm. This will also give you an edge over the chartered accountants all over the globe. Because if you think in terms of competing in the profession, uh, you know, beyond India, all over the globe, you must uh, have some bent of research and academics. So this would be my concluding remarks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Soral. Uh, Dr. Srini, um, uh, kindly just conclude this panel discussion about your and uh, be my and and uh, very mindful of the audience seems to be very much already doing research fantastic so when some students comes and ask me sir where should i do for scope for improvement the day they ask where should i do for scope for improvement that means they already started the progress so my question to them first if you want to do research all five fingers are not same all five fingers should not be same because every finger has a multiple purpose, objectives are different. 
everybody may not have the all the skills your skills are different you may not have all the skills my best suggestion when you don't have a skill you can acquire the skill how can you acquire the skill join hands with somebody who is more expert research is all about when my phd student comes i recommend them to go to iim faculty to learn tomorrow if i feel my students are worth enough to do i take saral sir help or shadul sir help research is all about knowledge knowledge need to be broadened when you meet many people your origin of knowledge spreads then you decide what to be done and keep always research in a funnel approach always i used to say repeating second time keep your research simple short and sweet and go more in depth on it you are not here to change the world i am sure those who are married you those who have kids you might be knowing it right even we don't have a right to change the channel in front of the kids so we are not doing to do the research to change the world accept the reality it might be inconvenient to you what you can add certain small baby steps in the research that also appreciate join hands identify the expert take their help it could be helpful for publication or finding your research concept and try to do the research based on your competency if you are chartered accountant if you are good in numbers try to do relevant to that no no i want to do something about supply chain management or artificial intelligence don't do topic for the market style and fashion do research based on your passion end of the day you are going to do research after doing this research somebody should identify you are an expert in that domain keep it in that your mind okay thank thank you dr shridi and uh, i hope you all have enjoyed the panel discussion and let me also share that at, at this age today let me tell you that nothing will give you most happiness than in doing what you enjoy and doing it in a very simplistic way and having good relations with everybody and that is very very tough let me tell you but you have to and nothing comes easy in life you have to invest you have to do hard work and everything will fall in place life is like a jigsaw puzzle everything falls in place and uh, very uh, good luck to you all for always and thank you for participating in such a, uh, a unique topic which is very different from our traditional topics so, over to you uh, uh, coordinators and uh, mrs kapoor and everybody of wrc Yes, Deepika, you can give a formal vote of thanks. Thank you, Kapoor Madam. Uh, good evening, everyone. I am Sir Deepika Gurbhutia. At the outset, I would like to thank our panelists who just not carried the panel discussion, but also enlightened us with a very new field wherein we can explore. The young chartered accountants can explore and very inside about the subject. Thank you, Dr. Sangeeta, ma'am. Thank you, Coral sir. Thank you, CA Dr. Shadul Shah sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shini Masan sir, and all the members who joined this session and making this a very interactive and knowledgeable se uh, session. Last but not the least, I would like to thank WRC for arranging such a innovative session. out of our regular taxations and audit sessions so thank you everyone for joining us today thank you so much thank you deepika and uh, thanks sangeeta madam shardu sir suraj sir srinivasan we all being there whenever we uh, asked you and approached you and it had been a nice session and in three days uh, we had a lovely interactive No, no, full of knowledge session for all of our participants and our participants um, thanks being there and it because of you people we could you know have this session so successfully conducted thank you everybody stay safe stay healthy thank you oh bye bye good night bye, good night thank you